A historic turnaround for the Sulphur Springs Wildcats as they snapped a five-year playoff drought and immediately went back to the winning days of old. Last year, in year number one under coach Brandon Faircloth and company, the Wildcat season was ended in a heartbreaking last-second loss to the Dallas Carter Cowboys. After 12 long months of reflection, dedication, determination, and hard work, tonight, the Sulphur Springs Wildcats will get a chance to avenge last season's playoff loss. Both of these teams have had great regular seasons, winning a combined 15 games, and each of them with aspirations of making deep playoff runs. But unfortunately, one of these team seasons will come to a halt here. It's all led to this. Will the Cowboys of Dallas Carter keep the upper hand, or will the Sulphur Springs Wildcats get their revenge and advance to the area round of the playoffs for the first time in a decade? Welcome in, everybody. We are live for a playoff edition of Sulphur Springs Wildcat football here from Hanby Stadium in Mesquite. If you've been hanging out with us all year long, thank you so much and welcome back. If this is your first time hanging out with us, I'm Tyler Lennon. I'm joined, of course, by my favorite person to spend Friday nights with a Sulphur Springs Wildcat legend, <laughs> national champion, Ryan Humphreys. What's going on, buddy? I'm flattered as always. Tyler, it's it's the best time of the year. We've, we've done this 10 times this year. And uh, none, none more special than this. Uh, you know, we talk about it. We talked about it all year. We talked about it in August with Coach Faircloth. You've got your pre-district season. You've got your district season. Mm -hmm. And now it's playoffs. And it's, it's a season in itself and, and obviously the most important. Yeah, and it's made even more special by the fact, of course, this is a very storied program in Dallas Carter. And, of course, this is the team who 12 months ago today, or not today, but, you know, 12 right. months ago, was the team that brought your season to an end. And a, and a chance at some revenge, obviously it's the playoffs. You know, you don't need any extra motivation, but that's got to be on these guys' minds. There's no question, Tyler. And last year, I think that Sulphur Springs came up just a little bit short. You know, you had some key guys out, uh, but but they felt like they could have won that game. And I think tonight there's a little bit of – there's going to be a little pep in their step because mm -hmm. it is Dallas Carter. And you talk talk about the history with Dallas Carter obviously a very very respected name in Texas high school football and so just you know just to be on the same field obviously it's a school that there are literal movies made about right uh, and, and so for 30s yeah. fa fantastic opportunity for the Wildcats tonight as well as the Cowboys and uh, I think I think it's gonna be a fun one I think so too we have a ton to get into in the pregame portion of this show and we're less than half an hour away from kickoff but before we go any further we want to give a huge shout out to our pregame advertiser Shelby Gamble who is your East Texas corporate sales rep for CBJ Custom Apparel. She takes a customer service approach to apparel decoration, merchandise, and custom designs for businesses and nonprofit organizations. Give her a call at 903-438-4382 for all your custom apparel needs. Ryan, I know this time last year, uh, obviously a lot of Sulphur Springs fans watch us throughout the course of the season, but I know this time last year when we played Dallas Carter, we had a ton of viewers from Dallas Carter, so much so that Corey and I, uh, we were at the uh, regional basketball tournament covering Sulphur Springs. Carter was there, and we had a couple of their fans bump into us, and they're like, hey, you're Tyler, you're Corey from Chad's Media, and let us know how much they enjoyed the broadcast. So hopefully we have you all back tonight, and uh, welcome in. That's really cool. Absolutely, yeah. We you know, we love when, when the away team, in, in our case, is on the broadcast uh, watching us, following us. Friday nights, uh, and and I think we're going to get a good show tonight out of Dallas Carter mm -hmm. and Sulphur Springs. Uh, you know, last year legitimately came down to the last snap, Literally, yeah. uh, and and I could see I could see something similar tonight. I think these are two evenly matched teams. Both have you know kind of a superstar on offense. Mm -hmm. You know, score a lot of points. Not really giving up a ton of points throughout their district schedule. Uh, Dallas Carter, you know, that district ended up being a lot tougher yeah. than, than maybe I expected. I thought that Salina, uh, you know, honestly, I thought Salina would run away with that district title. They don't even win district. Right. Uh, Pan uh, Panther Creek gets yeah, just their second year as a school, I believe, Pan too. Panther Creek wins the district title. Uh, Wilmer Hudgens, who actually – Right down to the end last night, yes. uh, plays Anna, the number two team in the state, I mean, to the very end uh, in their first round of the playoffs. So very, very competitive district on that other side. You know, this year, Sulphur Springs had the district championship last week versus Anna. Mm -hmm. First half looked fantastic. Second half did not go our way. Uh, and, I, you know, I, I actually got a, the opportunity to talk to some of the guys, and that hurt. I, I think yeah. they all really wanted a district title, and, and who doesn't? Uh, you know, my best advice to those that, that I was able to talk to let it bother you for two more hours, mm -hmm. okay? Go home, be mad about it, get in bed, you know. But when you wake up, it's all about Dallas Carter. Yep. That that instant on Saturday morning when you wake up, it's all about this. Because even though we're 8-2, and two, even though they're 7-3, and three, 
Zero and zero. We're zero and zero. Yeah. Uh, and and the beautiful part about this season, this specific you know little season, the playoff season, it's one or done. This yeah. this is it. This is there are going to be seniors tonight on either Dallas Carter or Silver Spring sideline that this is the last football game they'll ever play. Right. And that's a that's a hard truth to accept, uh, but it's reality. And, and I think that both sides understand that going into tonight. So there, there's going to be so much passion, and, and there's just it's it's going to be a lot of fun, Tyler. Yeah, I agree with you, Ryan. Usually we kind of save this for later in the in the pregame show, but tonight I think there's so many different things we want to get into for both both of these teams, and I want to make sure that we don't step on any of it. I want to make sure that we're able to talk about it in its full. So I think tonight we're going to do it a little bit earlier than normal, but it's time for everyone's favorite part of the pregame show, Hump's Keys to Victory. Ryan, what you got for us this week? Tyler, number one, and, and even though – the Wildcats need no motivation for tonight. It's playoffs. It's a rematch of last year's first round loss. We got to find the juice. Mm-hmm. Who is going to step up in the beginning, make the play to get the crowd jumping? Okay, we got to the the energy on the sideline. That's gonna that's gonna carry Silver Springs through the highs and the lows of a Texas high school football game. Is it a is it a sixty yard post to Skylar Lewis over the middle? Is it a Laren Vaughn big hit on the defensive side of the ball? What is it going to be? We've got to find the juice. Tyler number two. And I mean this in the most respectful way possible. Uh, I don't think we're going to stop Caden Landry tonight. Right. We got to find a way to slow him down. Uh, 100%. I did. We did some numbers this week. We we really dug deep into the stats this year for Dallas Carter and Silver Springs to put it into perspective. Uh, Skylar Lewis, who you guys have watched all season, fantastic player, probably the you know he's 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 our best player on offense yeah. uh, statistically. He accounts for around twenty three percent of our total offense. Okay, which is impressive. That's a lot. Huge number. Caden Landry, running back for Dallas Carter, accounts for around 40% of their total offense. And so I don't think that we are going to fully shut him down. But to win this game, you're going to have to slow him down. You've got to minimize the damage from Caden Landry, period. And number three, Tyler, it's playoff season. We talk about playoffs, you know, playoffs playoffs this, playoffs that. You and I, we look ahead. We've been doing it for two months. We're here, okay? Mm-hmm. We need no motivation. It's all about going 1-0. and We want to do the same thing the same time next week against whoever it is. Uh, but if we're going to do that, we got to beat Dallas Carter tonight. 100%. You went ahead and mentioned Caden Landry. And like you're saying, you, no one has stopped him all year. You're not going to stop him. But to slow him down, to put that into perspective, one, I believe, coming into this season, before a game had already been played, he was already the all-time leading rusher in <laughs> Dallas Carter history. And this is Dallas Carter. This, this, Dallas isn't, Carter. this isn't a second-year, fifth-year school. Quite literally, this is Dallas Carter. when you think of Friday Night Lights, you think of – I mean, Dallas Carter is the team in Friday Night Lights. Right, uh, right. But, yeah, I believe before a game was played this season, he was already the all-time leading rusher in school history. That's incredible. Over the last two seasons, 3,530 <laughs> rushing yards with 42 <laughs> rushing touchdowns. That's yep. incredible. This yep. year, uh, 1,200 rushing yards, 19 touchdowns, 120 yards a game, uh, about two touchdowns a game. That's incredible, man. Yeah, and I, I actually think he even missed a game this season. Yeah, so it was number, in nine games. You're right. Yeah, I yeah. mean, that just incredible, uh, you know, Dallas Carter, they, they their bread and butter is running the football. But this year, more than last year, they've had more success through they've, the air. La- right. Last year, it was almost 90-10 on the run pass. Yeah, this in, year, they're actually throwing the ball with some success. In the game against us last season, I believe they had negative five passing yards. I don't Granted, it. that was a much different situation. But uh, do you want to know how many rushing yards Caden Landry had against the Wildcats last year? Did a you throw lot. a guess at it? It had to be a lot. Uh, I'll go... I'll go 210. It was 257 <laughs> wow. with uh, four rushing touchdowns, and that was on 38 attempts. Probably not going to get 38 and I, attempts and tonight. If, but. If, I, if, if I remember correctly, Caden Landry took the opening kickoff yes, I believe almost he did. to the so crib. Like two yeah. or the three-yard line, yeah. So it, it is going to be a heavyweight, heavyweight title fight tonight. I really think both teams are going to trade offensive blows. I think so as well. It, it's almost you, – you joke about it. You've joked about it all season. It's like when you're playing NCAA or Madden. Uh-huh. Man, I just need one stop. I just need to get this I, I just, one stop. I just need the interception. I need right. the fumble. So whoever, whatever team is able to do that is going to come out victorious in this one. Yeah, there's one more player on the offensive side of the ball that I want to focus on. The, the two of them combined for, I mean, at this point, probably 60 65% of their offense, maybe yeah. even more. But number eight wide receiver, O'Ryan Wallace, he has over half of the receiving yards for this team this year, 528, and then he's got six of their 10 receiving touchdowns. So I think it's really going to boil down to those two players. Yeah, they kind of, I mean, it, it sounds like we're saying that Dallas Carter is 
is a one trick pony. You know, they've got their guys and that's what they do. It's a really good trick. Uh, <laughs> and so Silver Springs is going to have to slow that down. Uh, and, and, you know, also we're spending a lot of time talking about Dallas Carter. Silver Springs got weapons too. 100%. Uh, we are without Wyatt Watson tonight. Mm-hmm. He suffered a concussion last week in the Anna game. I would imagine he'd be ready to rock next week. Yes. Uh, but tonight you're going to have to get, obviously, Skylar Lewis, but you're going to have to get, you're going to have to get receiving yards out of Jackson here. I think that. He is a focal point tonight for the Wildcat offense. Get him in space. He does a great job getting those extra yards after screens. Uh, you know, two weeks ago, we saw him take a five yard slant yeah. all the way to the house. So he's obviously got the athletic ability to get to the next level behind the defense, and, and we're going to need to see that tonight. Now, I think it sounds like he'll be playing out of the slot a good bit more, and I really, really, really like him out of that position. I think that was kind of the idea coming into the year, and then some adjustments have been made, but I think he could be really dangerous out of the slot. No question. Obviously, a smart kid, you know, when in, in those zone situations, he just kind of needs to find his niche, get open, and let Brady hit him on in into the open spot. Now, you've already mentioned him. We give our players to watch kind of our predictions for our Way Bible Church players of the game this, uh, you know, every week. Are you going with Jackson Hare? Kind of what direction do you think about going there? Oh, man. Um, I don't know. I, I You know, last week I said that it was going to have to be Brady Driver. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, if we wanted to beat Anna, we came up short. And I think Brady played a good game. I, I think that we just lost that one in the second half, as simple as that. Uh, I will stick – I will stick with Brady Driver. Uh, I think that it's going to take some points tonight to win this one. I think that it's, you know, about a month ago I said that in that Paris game it was going to be whoever scored. Uh-huh. You, you had to get 30 to win that one. And I, I feel like this one is, is going to be similar. Yeah, I think so as well. Uh, going through some of the numbers this week, and I'd written this in the in the pregame article or the uh, preview article on Front Porch News, which you can always find all of our stuff on there as well. But um, this season, only once has Carter allowed 20 points and ended up winning that game. So I think you're probably right. I think if you could score 30 or more points, you're going to have a really good chance. I think the thing that scares me the most about Carter being that good of a running team, you know, when they put together scoring drives, it very well could They're take long. five, six, seven minutes off the clock. So you go back on offense if you're Silver Springs, we don't get points. Right. We might not touch the ball for seven or eight minutes. Right. And if that ends in points for Dallas Carter, it's going to be a short game tonight. Yeah, I think you're absolutely going to have to limit turnovers even more so than you which Brady Driver does a great job. He's got 39 total touchdowns this year to just seven interceptions. So clearly he's very good at limiting the turnovers to begin with. And it's the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Turnovers in the playoffs are exemplified. Uh, I played in – I was able to play two high school football playoff games. I played in multiple – uh, NCAA, FCS, I was about to say, how many playoff, college playoff games? games? Yeah, games plenty. Playing. Uh, and turnovers are huge. That mm-hmm. that changed that, that changes the absolute trajectory of the entire game, no matter what's going on. And so, like I've talked about all year through throughout every game we've ever called, there are highs and lows to yep. this thing. There's going to be really good moments tonight. We're going to score a touchdown. We're gonna we're gonna get a sack. It's gonna happen. We're also going to throw an interception or fumble or, or get sacked. or There's going to be bad things happening. Right. That, that is sports. And, yeah. and so whichever team is able to overcome that is going to win tonight. Now, Ryan, there are a handful of other things I want to get into with you tonight. But before we go any further, I think we should hear a word from our pregame advertiser, and then we'll be back for the rest of the pregame show. My name is Shelby Gamble, your East Texas corporate sales rep for CBJ Custom Apparel. At CBJ, I take a customer service centered approach to apparel decoration, merchandise, and custom designs for businesses and nonprofit organizations. I will work side by side with you throughout your embroidery, screen print, or sublimation project to ensure everything turns out great. Choose from our selection of high quality materials and watch your business shine. Give me a call at 903 348 Four three eight two for all your custom apparel needs. Ryan, one of the other things I wanted to get uh, into with you tonight, you mentioned being a player, playing in a number of playoff games, both in the high school and the college level. Can you kind of put me into the head of what these players are going through right now? Nervous. Nervous. Uh, I never played I never played a football game where I wasn't a little bit nervous. Right. Uh, but the playoffs, you know, you can feel – there's just a sense of urgency. There's a sense of urgency in the locker room. There's a sense of urgency in the coaching room. There's a sense of urgency when you go out to eat that week. That people people know what's going on. People are talking about it. Right. You you get it's just a butterfly feeling. I mean, it's it's if you're not nervous, you're not prepared. Because I've always felt that I was I was so nervous because I had prepared so much mm-hmm. and I, I want it to go a certain way because I'm so ready. And I'm so right. excited. And I I hope that the Silver Springs Wildcats are feeling similar this week. How much do you think is going into it? Because, again, like we, we mentioned earlier, you don't need any extra motivation, but this is the team that ended your season last year. How much do you think that's in their head? I, I mean, 
if they're human beings, it's in their heads. They they Fair. know. You you can say all you want. Ah, oh, you know, it doesn't matter who we play or, you know, we don't look at that stuff or we don't we don't know the spread this week. All that, they do, and yeah. they 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 remember the guys that were on this field last year, a year ago. That hurt. That that stings. And you you know you see your. I talked about being a senior. You see your senior brothers. That's the last football game a lot mm-hmm. of those guys ever played and will ever play. And there there's going to be the same thing tonight. One of these teams. They're turning in their they're turning in their equipment tomorrow morning or Monday right. morning, and that's football is just football is such a tough sport because you know you can if you played baseball you can go play slow pitch softball you, right. you can you can play organized you know pick up basketball you can play games. some basketball you play football golf. Th- this is this is it this, this, is, this it, yeah. is it and so I cannot stress enough how just the magnitude of it it's huge something you and I mentioned at the I believe in the playoff game last year but you and I very much remember our last high school game our last college game like we have vivid <laughs> memories of those things I think about it regularly mm-hmm. uh, and maybe that's sad maybe it's not but it meant so much to me I cared so much about it uh, I think about it regularly high school I, I played Lucas Love in my last game ever scored a touchdown on my last snap as a Silver Spring Wildcat balled like a baby afterwards uh, Sam Houston on our, on our 21 22 game win streak uh, we lost to Montana State in the second round. It, I I think about that moment right. often, uh, and so th- this is this is a big game. It's a big game for both sides, uh, and I, I'm positive that they don't need any type of extra motivation. Not to alienate any of our Carter viewers a, at all, because again, we we are very grateful to have you here. Um, but of course, we are kind of a Silver Springs broadcast, and of course, we just know more about them. We see them every week. Um, Obviously, I'm sure the same can be said about Carter, but to me, this feels like a very different team, the Silver Springs Wildcats, than it did last year. I think coming into last year's game, of course, you had a lot of injuries, you had some suspensions, you had some different things going on, and and I hate to say it, but you hadn't made the playoffs in five years. To me, it, it very much did feel like, hey, we've had this great season, it's awesome to be here, but I think now it does feel different. I think you're a very healthy team, you're arguably playing your best football that you've been playing all year. To me, this feels like a very different team in a very different situation. You know, obviously... Right now, the height of the sports world in, in DFW is the Texas Rangers. Mm-hmm. Okay, you just you're coming off a World Series win. Well, I look at the Arizona Diamondbacks, and it felt like to me, you know, we're really excited to be here. Right, we're, we're happy to be in the World Series. This is great. Last year, Silver Springs Wildcats. You're coming off of a 0 and 10 season or whatever it was. 0 and, 0 and 10 two years ago. Mm-hmm. Man, we're really happy to be here. This is this is cool. We're in the playoffs. We're playing a big team like Dallas Carter. This is great. Let's see how we can do. This year's a little bit different, and, and I think that I think that the kids on those side, on that sideline for Silver Springs, I think the coaches, staff, it's different. There was a lot of internal expectations last year. There's external expectations right. this year. It, it's not. I don't want to. I don't want to sound you know too definite here, but it's not enough just to get to the playoffs. I agree we with have you. a team that that can and should win playoff games. I agree, uh, with and you. so. You know, it's really cool that we're here. Uh, it'd be a lot cooler if we have a game next week. Uh, and, and Dallas Carter feels the same oh, way. I'm sure they feel the exact same way. I mean, this is a 100%. team that makes the playoffs every single year. You've made it to the area rounder further in the last couple of years. And, like, you, like I mean, you have a, one of the – maybe the most talented player on the field, or one of anyway, so I'm sure they feel uh, the exact same way. I, I can guarantee you that there is a – there's a worthy Texas high school football team that's going home tonight. Yeah, both of these teams very much are talented enough to be playing in the second round of there, the playoffs. There is, that is absolutely not debatable. So you had mentioned uh, some of the players and some of the coaches will tell you that they don't pay attention to things like spreads, but they are aware of them. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, obviously Dave Campbell's, they give out their predictions and their spreads for the games every single week. And you and I were a little bit shocked by this one. I thought it was going to be very close. I wasn't sure who was going to be the favorite. I thought maybe even Carter would be, but Dallas Carter is a 10-point favorite in tonight's game. Yeah, and you know, you heard me talk about that last week. Uh, Anna was a 20, 25 point yeah. <laughs> favorite, which obviously that did not happen. I was, I was, could not be more sure that that would not happen right. uh, to Silver Springs. Dallas Carter plus ten or minus ten, so ten point favorite. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I that's have a thought, little high to me. I would have said three one way. I thought or it was going to be three one way or the other. Yeah. Three Dallas Carter, three Silver Springs. I, I would have been good with that. Ten seems a little high. I expect this one. I expect this one to be decided within the next to last or last possession of the football game. I do as well. I don't know if you remember last year, but last year when they gave the spread, they said it was too close to call. They didn't give a spread. <laughs> they nailed and that one. And, of course, one. it ends yeah. up coming down to the final play <laughs> yeah. of the game. I, I'm, I'm with you. I think it very well is going to come to the final play, the final drive again. Boy, last, last year was a fun one. It that that been, came down. For you and I and for Ooh. Corey, our, our team here at Chad's Media, it couldn't have been a more fun 
first playoff Man, game to do. Man, that was fun. Uh, but I, I'm truly looking forward to tonight. I think that Silver Springs, I think they're going to be very prepared. I think that they're going to have a good scheme. They're going to have a good plan to try and stop Caden Landry. Don't know if they'll be right. <laughs> successful at all times. Uh, but I, I have no doubts that Dallas Carter is going to – they're going to bring the same energy. They're going to be prepared. They're going to have an answer for Skylar Lewis. They're, they're going to try to, you know, limit Brady, mm-hmm. you know, keep keep him in the pocket. How do we how do we stop the Brady's bull packet? They're, they're, they've been working since Saturday morning of right. last week to uh, try and figure out those questions both sides. So it it's going to be a close one tonight. That being said, I think when we're looking at our defensive players of the game, kind of prediction-wise, I think it's going to be – obviously we talk about the front four and the front seven a lot, but I'm really looking at a guy like a Laren Vaughn. Yep. I think he's – has a chance to be huge in this one. Well, and and when you play a running team, you you need that. And I, I would say either a Laren Vaughn or a Braxton Wall mm-hmm. or a Alex McCormick. But All to the of which second have been huge level, to the second level, our leading tackler, Ty, Grayson Hardy, great Grayson yeah. Hardy and Ty Bobby. Th- mm-hmm. Those two guys, they've done such a fantastic job of coming downhill from the safety position and being great run stoppers. And they're going to have to do that tonight. Yeah, and Austin Cheney been a great tackler this year as well. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the, the biggest thing in the secondary that I want to see is when Dallas Carter decides to throw the ball, we've got to be ready. We yeah, can't, 100%. It can't be run, 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 and then the time that they pass, it can't be a 30-yard play. That Dallas Carter, they're, they're going to be able to sustain way too much, way too much time of possession if they're completing long balls down the field. Yeah, no, Ryan Wallace, wide receiver number eight, has definitely proven to be really good in those situations because, like you're saying, there's going to be teams that are really, really, really overselling to try to stop and to try to contain that run, and that's going to lead to opportunities. I'm sure he's going to get some press coverage, some single coverage, and he's going to get a, an opportunity to take advantage of that. Well, and you all, and you know, when you've got a guy like Caden Landry, you know, we can stack the box. We can put seven, eight guys up against the line, but – well, your line of defense, you, you're you're a broken tackler two mm-hmm. away from Caden Landry getting off to the races, right? Uh, and so you just gotta you gotta pick and choose your poison. Uh, I think that I think that the, that if we're able to limit Carter on first down, we, we're a lot better if we yes. can limit the first down yards. We, we've seen that all season. If we can keep it to seconds and eights and and you know second and nine instead of second and two, second and three. We're going to limit the playbook for Dallas Carter, and that that's going to be a, a big part of the success for Sulphur Springs. I agree, Ryan. It looks like the Sulphur Springs Wildcats are getting ready to uh, to come out of the tunnel. We didn't get to grade Carter's tunnel tonight. I like there's a lot. It's the uh, the uh, tr- kind of traditional helmet look. Uh, what what, what I are you would thinking? Say, well, you know, I don't think it's a Hallsville or a or a Mount Pleasant. I don't think it's that. Uh, but I do like the helmet. What I will say about Dallas Carter's look is red and baby blue oh, is the best color scheme in it's, sports. It's gorgeous. It I mean, really it is. It screams Houston Oilers to me. Yes. Uh, and that, that, there is no better look than that. And while uh, we don't do a ton of Houston love on this broadcast, this is Houston not, this is not a colors, Houston broadcast, yeah. and I can assure you yeah. that Dallas Carter is passionate about that. I'm sure they are. <laughs> no, it is not the Oilers. No, no, no. Heck, they're even the Cowboys. So Yeah. Uh, Ryan, another thing that I did really want to look out to uh, for tonight, it feels like, looking at the stats and everything, um, Carter kind of does run a two QB system. They've got number three, Quay Robinson, who seems to be more of the traditional passer. And then they've got number two, Cam Patterson, who seems to be more of a mobile, more of a running quarterback. I'm really interested to see how they use that combination. Yeah, I, and you know, I think that you're gonna, I think you're gonna see some screens from from Dallas Carter tonight, just as an extension of the run game, get guys into space, get them on the outside running. Uh, but it, it will be interesting to see how they deploy that. Obviously, Silver Springs front seven has been impressive this year. I think that's been one of the highlights of the defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you need it. We we hadn't talked about him, which which. You can always bring this guy up, but you need a big game out of Nathan Andrews tonight. Yeah. You need you need Day Day Hall up the middle. You need you need Truth Home. You need those guys to be true run stoppers tonight. Wreak havoc. Be be in the backfield. Be be in Caden Landry's ear all night. Be be in the quarterback's face all night. You that those are things that has to happen for Sulphur Springs. Yeah, we talk about them a lot, but uh, I, I love the front four. I love the front seven, but specifically that kind of trio that you're talking about: Nathan Andrews, Day Day Hall, Truth Holmes. I mean, they're they're a ton of fun to watch. They are a ton of fun to watch, Ryan. We haven't given a uh, a final score prediction, which is something we usually do. I don't know if y'all can tell. It's it's showing a, a little under five minutes uh, on the clock here, and now Dallas Carter is looking like they're almost ready to come out of the out of the helmet, out of the tunnel. Tyler, I uh, you talk about a final score prediction, and I, I said this earlier to you guys off air. I'm actually gonna 
I'm going to edit that a little bit. I'm going to go 38. I'm going to go Silver Springs 38, Dallas Carter 34. 38, 34. That yep. sounds like a uh, a very fun game. Yep, uh, that's that's my prediction. So I was in the I was very much in the same realm as you. I'm thinking 35, 28. Okay, I do perfect. think it's going to come down to that final play, whether it's Silver Springs scoring on the final drive or Carter it's a one score trying game. to drive and not being able to get there. I do. I, it's going to be a one so. score game. I, I'm I'm pretty confident in that. Um, which is fun. That's that's what the people came to see. That's that's why they're tuned into Chad's Media 100%. on this beautiful Friday night. Great stadium too. I, I've actually never. I've been to Mesquite Memorial. Uh, you know, Silver Springs played many playoff games here, but I've never been here. Uh, yeah, this Hanby is my, Stadium, and it's it's very nice. This is my first time being here at Hanby Stadium as well, and it is very nice. The uh, the press box is very very nice. Again, we want to thank every single one of you for joining us here on Front Porch News and Chad's Media. And we want to, uh, again, give a big shout-out and a welcome in to all the, the viewers from Dallas Carter. We enjoy having viewers from both sides. And I think we do a pretty good job of being fair, being unbiased. But Kyle, here you come. Remember, you remember how great Dallas Carter's band is? Yes. Absolutely rocking. Yes, they were. I was watching back <laughs> last week, or last season's game, and they were. They yeah, were rocking. They, uh, they get after it. We got the Silver Springs band rocking as well. Tyler, this will be the first game all season that Wyatt Watson will not be the first out of the tunnel. You're right. You are absolutely right. That's something that uh, obviously he does <laughs> every single week. It's looking like Jeff Stevenson going to be the one to lead the uh, lead the charge. Jeff Stevenson leading the charge for the Silver Springs Wildcats tonight. Yeah, hopefully uh, Wyatt Watson would be, would be back. Uh, next week to be able to to do that. Ryan, one of the things we kind of alluded to it just a tiny bit earlier, um, but you know, the team that ended up winning this district and by the way, we, we mentioned Dave Campbell's a lot on here, but Dave Campbell's, they did a, a five person panel um, that gave their predictions for what the final four would be in each classification from 1A all the way to 6A and I believe two or three of the people on that five person panel picked Anna to win this region and uh, they barely squeaked out of W I was going to say, uh, after last night, I don't know that they're going to love that pick, but Anna, <laughs> obviously a uh, very talented group. Now, Papa T was the one supplying me with updates all, all the way last <laughs> yes. night. It turns out, it, it sounded like they led just 3-0, and with just a couple minutes left in the game, they end up punting to Wilmer Hutchins, and then they forced a fumble, scored on that, end up winning 10 to nothing. but that was a very close game the whole time. Yeah, uh, the score was not score was not a fair indicator of how uh -huh. close that one was. Wilmer Hutchins, you know, certainly could have won that one. Yes. Uh, and obviously this Dallas Carter crowd that's listening to us, they know that the Wilmer Hudgens, the Panther Creeks, the Salinas, oh, yeah. th those are those are big-time football games. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, Dallas Carter, they, they beat Wilmer Hudgens to be playing mm -hmm. us tonight. Uh, so, Ryan, I think we're about ready for the national anthem. Uh, for anyone that's new here, obviously Ryan and I kind of get out of the way for the national anthem, but then y'all are uh, – Stuck with us the rest of the night, and then at some point we can talk about who the winner of this game will uh, will end up getting.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us live from Hanby Stadium here in Mesquite. Whether you're here as a supporter of the Zulver Springs Wildcats or the Dallas Carter Cowboys, we very much appreciate you finding us on Front Porch News and Chad's Media. Ryan, we're about ready to go, man. And uh, we, we talk about it every single week. But are you hoping for the ball <laughs> or are you hoping to start on defense tonight? You know, I want to start with the football because I, I do you know, as well. I don't want to see an instance where Dallas Carter gets they, they get the toss, they take the ball, and they take seven minutes off the clock, and uh -huh. that ends in seven points. So I don't I don't want to see that. Uh, and so I'm hoping that the Wildcats start with the football. Yeah, I agree with you because, like we said, I mean, I, I think when Carter puts together long drives, I think they're going to be long drives. I think it's going to be five, six, seven minutes. Could be even longer than that. And uh, I also don't, uh, I don't want to replicate last year's long uh, opening kickoff return. Uh -huh. I, don't, I don't feel like seeing that. Okay. You know, what do we know? Sauver Springs going to defer. <laughs> Tyler, I wanted to jump in before you asked me in a little bit, but Stephenville actually won last yes. night. Yes. Uh, and so. I believe they, they did so pretty handedly, correct? 47 to 12. So yeah. the, winner, the winner of this one is going to, in fact, get Stephenville. Yeah, and I think Papa Tia told me it was like 37 0 at one point, maybe okay. even at the half. So, yeah, the winner of this one. Uh, would go on, like you're saying, to play Stephenville, yep. who's ranked like number five in the state. Maybe? That's, pr that's yeah. probably about right. Yep, they've had a good year. Good, yeah. good. Uh, obviously, good tradition there. Ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you so much for joining us. And again, want to thank Shelby Gamble for bringing the pregame show to us. Before we get started with tonight's kicks, my other friends, I want to tell you about starting with our good buddy Josh Boatman. He is your local and trusted insurance agent with a family of his own. He understands the importance of protecting the ones who matter the most. He also understands that no two families need the same coverage, and that's why he will make sure to customize plans to fit your specific needs. Whether it's home, auto, or life insurance, Josh has you covered. Give him a call today. I'm excited, right? It feels oh, like playoff football, man. This is big time. That opening kickoff is uh, – that's an electric feeling running out. You've got the music going. You're starting to mm -hmm. get the chills, got the butterflies in your tummy. It's, it's going to be a fun one. Yeah, and as you've already alluded to earlier in the night, last season, of course, these two teams played each other in the by-district round. It started exactly like this with Sulphur Springs kicking two uh, to Dallas Carter, and I believe it was Caden Landry who took it almost to the crib. Took it to like the, the three or the four or the five, somewhere I know for there. this. I wouldn't test it again. <laughs> I don't think I would either. I don't think I would either. I believe it. I believe he's good. I don't need to see it myself. Here we go. And they're not going to. Going to be a pooch. Carter going to get to start at about the 38 before they do. Ryan, when you have a sports injury, Christus Orthopedics and Sports Medicine is the team to trust. With fellowship trained sports medicine orthopedic surgeon Dr. Christopher Meltzakos and hand fellowship trained orthopedic surgeon Dr. Christian Doubtit, your health is in good hands. To schedule an appointment in Sulphur Springs, call 903-885-6688. Now, Tyler, they actually threw a flag at the end of that. They kicked the ball. Okay. So maybe an unsportsman is what you're – okay. Producer Corey, that was Producer Corey helping us out. For anyone that doesn't know, big shout-out to produ Producer Corey Hankins. Also, big shout-out to the entire Chad's Media team here. We've got Caitlin Hankins keeping it in the family. we got Abby Tips, and we've got, as always, camera woman Chloe Copel. A lot of camera women tonight, Ryan. And, of course, they get to do all the work while me and you just sit here and watch football. So, Tyler, they're going to call a delay a game, which that's where the kicking gotcha. of the ball came in. So it's just going to be a five-yard penalty. It'll be a first and 15 to start here. No, first, no. It shouldn't oh, be first and 15. okay, cool, cool, it, it, cool. It's, it's before this gotcha. play ever even gotcha. existed. So it would still uh, be so first and 10. Just five yards less uh, gotcha. field position. Gotcha. Thank you for the clarification on that. So starting at the 34. 
be interested to see, you know, what Dallas Carter formationally uh, does tonight. To give to Orion Wallace on the first play. And the reason I say that is because that one, if you noticed, there was actually a quarterback and then two running backs mm -hmm. in the shotgun but to the right of him. And so he kind of had that two lead blockers, throw the little pop pass that Sulver Springs will run a time or two a game. Uh, but they're able to get five there. Yeah, and that was number two, Cam Patterson, uh, the quarterback on that one. Like we said, it look, seems like they do kind of a two QB system, so excited to see how they approach that for the remainder of the night. And we already mentioned uh, number eight, O'Ryan Wallace, being a big threat of theirs, and he's already gotten involved. Second and six from the 37. Patterson keeping it himself. And he is quick. Yeah. Obviously, you know, he, he's going to be a guy that – He's able to if he's able to find open space, he can really make you pay. Uh, but there, I mean, Silver Springs really in a pretty good position to make that a one or two yard gain, uh -huh. and it ends up being a three or four yard gain. Yeah, Ryan, we're finding ourselves with our first third down of the night, third and two, and we haven't seen Caden Landry get the ball yet. I would think. Uh, I bet it's coming here. I bet it is. Yeah. <laughs> third and two. It is a give to Landry. And Ryan, he has got a lot of room. He is still going. That kid is a baller. Going to be out at about the 36. You know, Ryan, we do a ton of prep before every single game. And, of course, Twitter is a way where you can find a lot of these guys. They'll, uh, you know, retweet or they'll announce their um, scholarship offers. And it looks like he has gotten a lot of looks and everything. But I haven't found a ton of actual scholarship offers for him, which I find to be very shocking. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, I don't know where he'll end up. I don't know what level he'll end he'll up at. He'll be playing at, on Saturdays. He will so. be playing on Saturdays yeah. in some capacity. Obviously, a uh, he's a next level, next level athlete. Absolutely. Patterson over to Landry. And he's just very dangerous with the ball in his hands. I wouldn't be surprised if you don't see a lot of those swing passes like that. Again, it's just an extension of the run game, really widen the defense out and put them in positions they don't want to be. Making an open field tackle on a quarterback like Dallas Carter has or on Caden Landry, that's you know, that's hit or miss. You're not gonna you're not gonna bat a thousand on that. Just uh not even two full minutes into this one and Carter all the way up to the thirty one now. Gonna be a second and five. It's an empty backfield for Patterson this time. Gets the pass off to Wallace, and it is enough for a first down, and we kind of mentioned that in the pregame show, but I think a lot of their offense is going to be those two, Wallace and Landry. No, there's no question, and, and I that worries me. If you're – this run-heavy team, if we're completing passes down the uh -huh. field, I mean, even if it's five yards a pop, that is a problem. Uh, because of how efficient this team is on offense. And look, Tyler, if you look at the clock, we're already down to nine minutes. Yeah. And so – there, there's, if this ends in points, it's going to be a six- or seven-minute drive. Patterson keeping it up this time. And, Ryan, Excuse me. no, it is not. Three minutes. <laughs> he said, word? How right. much time do I need? Right. 25-yard <laughs> rush for Cam Patterson. And the Cowboys is going to score first in this one. Incredibly, incredibly athletic, efficient, just overall a dominating opening drive for the Carter Cowboys. I mean, that – I don't think you could have drawn it up any better. No, you couldn't. And, man, their offense is a ton of fun to watch. Very, uh, I don't know, Oregon. I was going to say college. Er, early yeah. 2010s Agreed. Oregon. And the kick is good with 9.32 left in the first. Carter leads 7-0. Are you ready to make your dream of owning a new home a reality? Look no further than Clayton Homes of Sulphur Springs. A little over an acre of land complete with rock driveway and a spacious two-car garage on a solid concrete slab. Clayton Homes of Sulphur Springs is offering you the chance to buy this incredible lot and pick out the perfect home. Visit Clayton Homes of Sulphur Springs today and let us help you turn this beautiful lot into your very own sanctuary. Come see me and my team at Clayton Homes of Sulphur Springs and experience the difference. Ryan, if you're just joining us, you've only missed two and a half minutes of action, but the, Car the Carter Cowboys have already found the end zone. A 25-yard rushing touchdown for quarterback Cam Patterson. They lead 7-0.
And that one returned to about the 26 or the 27. So we're going to see the Wildcats take over for the first time tonight. Before they do, I want to tell you, at DMB Loans, they make the loan process easy. Their competitive rates and quick application process make them one of the largest in the industry. With over 30 years in the business, their team of loan experts will work with you to find a loan that fits your needs. They also offer the best furniture and appliances around with great financing and local delivery. Just visit the, their showroom or give them a call. DMB Loans is your local loan specialist when you need cash. Trust a hometown business. Tyler, the bad news is that Silver Springs is down 7-0. The good news is seven points is not going to be enough to win this one. Uh -huh. We're, it, it's going to be a dogfight. Passing on first down to Skylar Lewis. And he's still going, Ryan. All the way up to the 30. Skylar Lewis is a beast. Tyler, it, 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 it immediately feels exactly like last year's <laughs> it game. Does. First drive, Carter comes out, you know, throws a seven-point punch to the face. Sulphur Springs battles back. You saw, you know, that was very C.J. Williams reminiscent. Uh -huh. Just a quick slant over the middle taken for at least 40 or 50 yards. And it, it's this one's going to be a high-scoring one. This is this is a ah, – this is a – Texas high school football. Yeah, I mean, this is this is going to be a high-scoring one. Ron, I missed my first chance to say 9:03. <laughs> you get on my game. First down. Another pass out to Lewis. And another solid gain there on first down. See where they mark him out. Tyler, I mean, Skylar Lewis is already over the halfway mark True. to 100. So uh, uh, I meant to update the milestone. He came into tonight needing, I believe, 123 to get to a thousand. To get to a thousand? Yeah. Oh, he's getting he was that. 877. He's getting that. Yeah. Uh, he's he's probably about halfway there. Uh, probably. So. It's gonna be a second I like and the, six. I like the quick screen out to him. Get get the ball in his hands. Let let him work. Now he's in motion. Brady rolling out. This time it's Chris Adams. Chris Adams is still going. And now the Wildcats for the first time tonight are in the Bell Concrete Red Zone. And with Wyatt Watson out, you know, guys like Chris Adams, he, he's going to have a really big opportunity to step up and make some big plays tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chris is a player I like to watch. He's got one touchdown this season. Cam Jefferson, the running back. It's going to be first and 10 from the 11. This has Brady's bull package potential. Mm-hmm. Play action. The pass is out to Skylar Lewis. It is complete, and that's going to get him up to about the one or the two. And now I know what <laughs> I know what's coming here. So that was enough for the first down, I believe, Ryan. And it's going to be first and goal. You've got four tries at it, Tyler. Yep. There, there's no reason for the kicker to even be warming up, but for the extra point. First and goal. And Ryan, for the fortieth time this season. Brady Driver has a touchdown. That was his 20th rushing touchdown. So he's <laughs> he's got 20 passing and 20 rushing. I'd say that's pretty even. Good snap, good hold, and good kick. Still with 7.49 left in the first. We're all tied up, 7-7. Seven, seven. Serving quality food has always been a top priority. Because chicken is at the center of our menu, we serve only real breast meat without fillers, artificial preservatives, or steroids. In our kitchens, we focus on high quality, freshly prepared ingredients to serve our customers the best we have to offer. Whether you're eating in or grabbing to go, we guarantee that signature Chick-fil-A service every time because it is our pleasure to give you the best experience possible. Call us today or order catering online for a Wildcat football watch party from your Sulphur Springs Chick-fil-A. Ryan, you said this one might be high scoring. It might be. Well, then I said that Carter was going to take six or seven minutes <laughs> True. off of the clock before they, they scored seven. They took two and we've a half now, minutes. We've now scored 14 points. Um in less than five minutes. And so <laughs> this is going to be a NASCAR battle tonight. It, Lots it, of points. It very well may be. And I'm excited to see this uh, Cowboy offense again. It was a lot of fun to watch the first time. Kind of a funky setup here. It is. If Silver Springs is able to pooch it into that gap. Filled it at the 25. 
There is a flag in the backfield over here, probably. A, yeah, I don't, I'll be honest. I, I, they're going to call block in the back, and now they're actually going to call late hit on Silver Springs oh, or wow. on that sideline. So. I don't know. I don't think that the block in the back was really that egregious. I, I think he could have went without throwing the flag there. Uh, but that's going to be 15 back from the spot. But then they're going to tack on 15 on top of that. Yeah. And so it's well, really just going to end up being right where the flag's at, I believe. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Uh, while we wait to see where they do spot this one, I want to tell you, at Hooten's Hardware, they offer a wide variety of tools, materials, and supplies for all your home, business, and outdoor projects and repairs. With over 40,000 square feet of materials in stock, they're sure to have everything you need for any job. They only carry the highest quality products because your satisfaction is their top priority. Hooten's Hardware. They're more than just nuts and bolts. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so that one is going to end up being... It's going to end up ultimately helping Sulphur Springs because it's you know, going to move it back from where the return ended up. We marking it where the twenty about the, about the twenty nine, yeah. So that that's going to end up being almost exactly where the block in the bag happened. Uh huh. Okay, first and ten from the twenty nine. Patterson gives to Landry. And it feels like late uh, Landry can get to like zero to hundred very quickly. Absolutely. He's got some Malachi in him. Just kind of mm -hmm. gets to gets to full speed quickly. You know, once he sees once he sees a gap in the defense, see, finds some space, he hits it. Yeah, I mean, he, he's able to, and even smaller spots because he's not he's not a big guy. I mean, he's a he, he's a smaller running back, and so he's able to find these gaps in the defense in the front seven, and he can turn a two yard gain into a four yard gain. Yeah, we talk a lot about like the difference in quickness and like actual speed. And I feel like he's got he's both probably for got sure. a little bit of both. Now, there is a flag on the play. Another Two flag flags. is thrown on the play. Patterson did pick up enough for the first down, but. Those are thrown in almost certainly offensive penalty areas. Yeah, I would think so. And that's big. I, you know, neither team tonight, you don't want to play behind the sticks. Mm -hmm. You know, don't, don't turn a second and six into now second and 16. Right. Yeah, we very much talked about, like, got to very much limit the turnovers, try to win the turnover battle, and I think the same goes for the penalty battle. There's no question. Now, we'll say the difference between these two teams and some of the other teams we saw during district play is I would feel much better about them making up the ground. You know, offensively, these are two very good teams, but... Makes it second and 15 from the 24. The pitch out to Landry. Having to come back this way. What was going to be a big hit, <laughs> yeah. he just bounces right huge, off of it. Huge hit, uh, but Caden Landry bounces off of it and continues to go. So, Tyler, what was, what was second and 15 is third and six. Six. Yeah. Yeah, third and six from the 33. And you know you got a good run offense. If uh -huh. it's second and 15, we're thinking, ah, we'll just run it. We'll, right. get, we'll get over half of that back, and we'll probably on third and five, we'll probably line it up and run it again. Now number eight, Orion Wallace. He's definitely someone I'm watching here on a third and six. Now empty set. Uh, that to me screams QB draw. You think so? Um, so that's a very quick pass. And that's Andrews. He's able to break the first tackle. Now getting to the sideline, Kion Andrews, he's a beast extension, as well. Extension of the run game, Tyler. We're yep. throwing screens. We're getting people out of, out of place defensively. We're spreading them out. And right there, they put the Silver Springs defender in a bad position because he's only got one man to beat. Right. If he doesn't make that tackle, he's off to the races. Yeah, that's a great point. Easy first down after that broken tackle. Yeah, I mentioned uh, Wallace has six of the ten receiving touchdowns, and uh, Andrews has two. So, together, they, they make 80% of those receiving touchdowns this year. First and 10 from the 47 to give to Landry. And he's ridiculous, man. 
I'll tell you another thing that I'm, I'm already quickly noticing, Tyler, is that the Dallas Carter receivers block really well on the outside. They give a ton of effort, and that's 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 crucial to a guy like Caden Landry. He mm -hmm. he's able to bust it to the outside. He you know there's too much going on in the front seven. It, it, it's cloudy. It's muggy. I'm bouncing it outside. If I can get a block, it's like I'm saying you're putting people in right. bad positions. Yeah, they've done an incredible job blocking for him. First and ten from the thirty. Still just barely over the halfway point in this first quarter. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the over under on points tonight is it's got to be in the sixties. Yeah, I don't I know what think. it was set at, yeah. but uh, thinking inclined to take the over regardless. <laughs> and a big run on first down there. That went all the way up to the fifteen. But there is a late flag. We want to avoid any of the late flags if at all possible. <laughs> Face mask. And that might just be half the distance maybe to the half goal, the yeah. To the goal, yeah. Put it about the <laughs> the eight, maybe know, the, the seven, seven or eight, eight yeah. yeah. Be first and goal. Yeah, we might be. Tyler, this just very, very much feels uh, reminiscent of an NCAA uh, 14 it, football it, it game. It very much does. Uh, let's, you know, I need one interception. I need one. We're not need, far off from getting to play it again, man. Yeah, I need, I need one turnover on downs. You're right, next summer. Yeah, I can't wait. Ready for that. First and goal. That's got to be false start. Got to yep. be, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to start a dynasty mode with, like, Tulane or, you know. <laughs> now, false start, false start first and goal is not a penalty you want mm -hmm. uh, because, they're you know, you can't. Yeah. You, I mean, you got to score. Yeah, instead uh, of so four tries at seven or eight yards, now right. it's four tries at 13. Right. Or really only three, depending on, you know. We don't know what the kicking situation is. Yeah, obviously, we always talk about uh, not, you know, you don't you don't know a high school kicking situation just because uh, you never know what you're going to get. You, some teams, some teams are bound it's like to like a box of chocolates. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they they go for it on every fourth down, or their range is 20 yards out, or whatever it may be, and so we we won't know that until Dallas Carter shows us. Five minutes left here in the first. It's going to be first and goal from the 12. It's actually a Wildcat snap. There. It was, yeah. And the Wildcats do a pretty good job of, of bringing them down. Seeing where they uh, spot this one at about the seven, it looks like. And I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see something similar again. I mean, I would, if I had to guess, very well could go back into the hands of Landry. There's two backs out there. It's going to be second and goal from the seven. 420 left in the first. Patterson keep it in himself. And for the second time tonight, he is in. And a late flag. Now, Sulphur Springs reacted like that's going to be on Dallas Carter. There's actually another flag, and that one looks like it's probably on Sulphur Springs. A lot of tension going in this one, Tyler. And I think that feeds into... You know, you asked me if I thought that the Sulphur Springs sideline, those players, that locker room, are they thinking about the fact that Dallas Carter was the team that knocked them out of the playoffs last year? And I think I think early on you feel like these guys are playing with a lot of emotion. And so my, my answer to that, to that question is definitely yes. Uh -huh. So both teams, unsportsmanlike conduct, those are going to wave off. I missed it earlier, but Jeremy Delorge, usually part of our uh, our team, could be here tonight. His prediction was 35-31, Sulphur Springs. And it is good. 4-16 left here in the first. Cowboys lead 14-7. Adair with Janet Martin Realty. I'm also the proud mother of two boys and an officer in Mother's Culture Club. I understand the importance of a safe and supportive community for your family. That's why I'm passionate about helping people find their perfect home. When you work with me, you get more than just a realtor. You get a trusted partner who is active in the community and cares about you and your family's future. So if you're looking for a realtor who is passionate about helping you find the perfect home, Make sure to give me a call. I look forward to helping you. 
we still got four minutes and 16 seconds left in this first quarter. We've got a combined 21 points already. Yeah, this is uh, this is shaping up to be a very high scoring game. Silver Springs has shown, <laughs> they've shown no signs of stopping the Carter Cowboys thus far. Very true. Uh, and we'll see, we'll see what Silver Springs has up their sleeve on this offensive possession. And I, you know, you couldn't have drawn it up any better last possession. You, you had a quick, had a quick completion to Skyler Lewis. He was off to the races, got a, got the ball back in his hands again, uh, was able to move the sticks. And so I, it's, it's going to be a lot of that tonight. Jackson Hare with his second return of the night. And again, gets that one to about the 25 or so. Before the Wildcats take over for a second time tonight, I want to tell you whether it's routine maintenance, pool repairs, or equipment installation, where he pools has you covered. They take care of the hard work so you can dive in and have fun. Call them today because when it comes to your pool, only the best will do. So it's going to be at the 27. I think Tyler, that's where they started the last time as well. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll go ahead and put this call in right now. You know, with no Wyatt Watson tonight, you're going to see a lot more of Chris Adams, but you're also going to see a lot more of Caden Mitchell. I, I'll. I'll go ahead and throw in a uh, trick play double pass somewhere tonight. I like that. The give to Malachi Rowland, and it's enough for a first down. You know, the last time you made that prediction, we did end up seeing it. <laughs> yeah. Malachi, obviously, first carry tonight. Good to get him back in full full speed. You know, you didn't have him in a big portion of the season this year, uh, but very good change of pace guy. I think you're also going to see a heavy dose of Cam Jefferson tonight. Yeah, I think so as well. And, of course, we've made it pretty clear, but we're, we're big fans of Malachi rolling over here at Chats Media. Up to the Dirk yard line, the 41. I like that reference. Yeah. Brady's got three to his right. Gives to Roland again. You know, Carter sniffed that out very quickly, but a nice little juke there to make a miss. Well, and it looked like their defensive front there. Brady, that's a read option. He, he's he got the ability to pull that. Let's see it here. But he really didn't have space. You see uh -huh. that corner? He He's spying Brady. They know that Brady has dual – he has dual threat quarterback ability. And, and so, you know, Malachi there, that could have been a loss of – or maybe, you know, back to the line of scrimmage, but he turns it into a gain of four – uh, and you're gonna, you, you gotta move the ball on first down. That, that's how this Silver Springs offense runs. Brady running it himself here on second down. He's got enough for the first, up to about the 45. And as I'm saying, you know, dual threat ability. Brady, uh -huh. uh, QB draw, and I, I feel like that's a play that we haven't seen a ton this year. I don't know that there's been a ton of QB draw. He, his is more design run or, you know, read option. He's reading that edge, pulling it. Uh, but I do like the draw. Do like the draw call there. Yeah, you know we sound like a broken record because we keep mentioning it, but just very reminiscent of like 2010s college football. We've got two very good passing, but two very good mobile quarterbacks. This makes for a really fun game. We've already seen Cam Patterson rush for two touchdowns for the the Cowboys, and of course Brady Driver rushed for the first touchdown for Silver Springs tonight. First and ten from the 45. Brady passes out to Roland. And Malachi gets a nice little gain there of about seven or so, maybe six. Yeah, up to the 39. You know, another thing tonight, Tyler, there, there's going to be spots where Sulphur Springs goes for it. There's going to be spots where they go for it on fourth down instead of kicking just because, you know, we got to show that we can stop the Cowboys. Yeah, we we true. can't. If we count in threes tonight, we're going to lose. Agreed. we got to count in sevens. You hear me talk about that a lot. Second and four. A give to Roland. Back over to Adams, but the ball is on the ground. I think Adams was able to recover, though. Now, Tyler, that was going to be – we kind of caught the tail end of that. There we go. So they're going to hand this off. They're going to pitch it to Chris Adams, flea flick it back to Brady Driver, and Cade oh. Mitchell is is wide open. That was going to be a flea flick. Absolutely. Around. Nice. Absolutely. Cade Mitchell is running scot-free down the field uh, for a walk-in touchdown, but just a disaster play. Uh, you know, Coach – Coach Cardi, uh, when I was at Sam Houston, we we loved running. We called them elements. Uh, we had we had one of those in, two of those in a week. Man, they're great when they work, but it, it's it's a real nail in the side when things go wrong. Third and fifteen. Cam Jefferson in the backfield now. Brady running himself. Gets back to about the original line of scrimmage, the fourth and ten. And Ryan, I got to mention for uh, our Dallas Carter viewers who are seeing us for the first time since last year, we've made a lot of improvements, both with producer Corey killing it on the replays and you now <laughs> having the ability to watch the replays yes. and really dissect what's going on. Yes, uh, definitely. You know, if we run this back for round three next year, <laughs> we'll, we'll probably add something else. Who cool. knows? Yeah, we know what you want to add. <laughs> yeah, I need, I need my yellow marker. Ryan. Could be going for it here on fourth and ten. I don't know that they'll actually go for this. Oh, you got to snap that. Yeah. 
Love the play call there, kind of the free, you know, you're trying to get the jumper, get the free play, throw it up to Skylar Lewis, but they are going to punt this one away. It's looking like a solid punt. We'll see where they spot it at the 14 or the 15. So that is a nice punt. Just 28 seconds left here in this uh, first quarter. And real quick, while we've got a second, I want to tell you about our friends at Gary's Pest Control. They help homeowners and business owners control bug and pest problems all throughout East Texas. They immediately assess and address current pest infestations and help you prevent them from happening again in the future. Give them a call today at 966 588 Three two seven nine. So Ryan, there we see our first stop from either team, and uh, we'll see if <laughs> I was going to joke. Can I, answer back. Yeah. I was going to say I'm obviously kidding here, but I think it's over. I, I think that uh, I don't know. I, I, we said it was one score, and so this one, this one might be done, Tyler. <laughs> going to be going to be a long one. So first and ten from the fifteen. Pass out to Landry, and he is off to the races, Ryan. All the way up to about the – well, past the 50. I really thought maybe he got him. No, okay, now we're spotting it. It looks like back here at about the 44, which is where I thought he probably went out. But, yeah, it's a great – I mean, you go from the 15 to the 44. Yeah, Caden Landry is already – he's got to be inching close to that century mark which in is total wild. offense. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he is a uh, incredible player. First and 10 from the 44, 19 seconds left in the first. Now Patterson keeping himself. Great read to come back this way. But the Wildcat defense is going to stop him. I talked about that last week. You know, there are times where cutting it back, that that can really go well for an offense. But if Silver Springs can just keep contain, and, and you know, you, if everyone's swarming, everyone's in position, it doesn't matter how fast you are. Cutting yep. across field is never going to go well. Uh, and Silver Springs was able to bottle them up there. Ryan, that'll do it for the first quarter. Carter leads 14-7. Whether it's in the clinic, in the water, or in the comforts of your home, East Texas Physical Therapy can provide you with an individualized treatment plan to meet all your rehab needs. Whether it's physical therapy, occupational therapy, or speech therapy, our experienced staff understands the importance of personalized care and will work with you to set and reach your goals. In business, for over 12 years, we're committed to helping you get back to living life to the fullest. Call us today to get started on your journey to healthier living. Your original hometown clinic, East Texas Physical Therapy. Treatment you need, care you deserve. Come see us at Elevate Aesthetics in Sulphur Springs, a premier med spa for all your anti-aging treatments. We offer Botox, fillers, microneedling, IV hydration, B12, and skinny shots. And if you're struggling with weight, our compounded semaglutide weight loss program is proven to help you lose weight. Make the choice today for a more confident, vibrant you. Visit us at Elevate Aesthetics in Sulphur Springs or call us at 214-205-1333. Aging is inevitable, but looking good is a choice. Start of the second quarter, 14-7. It's going to be a second and 12 after a tackle for loss from T.J. Bolden. But Patterson getting all those yards back and then some. He's got enough for the first down run. And, I mean, this is just a very tough offense to stop when they're not passing it out to Wallace. They can pass it off or hand it off to Landry. Patterson can keep it himself. I mean, those th that trio is, is tough. Tyler, a uh, relevant score update here. Salina jumps out to a 14-0 lead on Paris. Oh, okay. So, obviously, for our viewers, Salina in Dallas Carter's district got second place, mm -hmm. and Paris in Silver Springs district got third. Yeah, and Paris played both Anna and Silver Springs very closely. Incredibly close. Both won one score games. First and 10 from the 44. That's a great tackle by Grayson Hardy there. Talked about it in the pregame. You've got number two up top. He sees run, and he is immediately downhill, mm -hmm. misses the blocker, and is able to trip up the quarterback. Yeah, and he was the leading tackler for this team. He went into the final regular season game with already over 100 tackles. And for a sophomore, I mean, he's been very, very, very big. You know, Ty Bobby kind of had to fill the quote-unquote Riley Hammonds role, leaving Grayson to kind of fill the Ty Bobby role. Second three from the 37. And he's got the first down. And then 
up to maybe the 26 or so, 27. You know, they they would be a very difficult team to force turnovers against. Well, and they just, you know, when they put it in the air, it's it's been so efficient. We're we're not even having a chance to make the play on the ball and and running the ball. I mean, if you if you focus on ball security, you know, you really should never fumble. Uh, and it, it looks like so far Dallas Carter obviously puts a big emphasis on that. Landry on first down. And he's all the way up to the five. It's going to be a first and goal for the Cowboys. Their offense is a, a well-oiled machine. Just a little over ten minutes here in this uh, first half, and they're knocking on the door for their third score. First and goal from the five. Another give to Landry. He's met quickly this time. If Silver Springs could somehow get out of this with only giving up three, I would mm -hmm. consider that a huge win. Would as well. Would as well. I am curious in that situation, do you think? Again, I, don't we don't, yeah. I don't know. I don't know the kicking situation. Yeah. And so – from the five, the way they've moved the ball, I would say it's probably four down territory, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know. We get another go at it from the five here on second and goal. It's right back to Landry. He's brought down uh, maybe the, the two or the three. Maybe the three, I believe. Yeah, and this uh, play very much could determine it. Who knows? Think they're going right back to Landry? Yeah, I think so. I don't. And they are. He's going to be short, Tyler. So mark him down at the one. I, I think you're certainly going for it. I would think so as well. I mean, you've gotten, which we've actually got a uh, a player on the field, but I think he's going to be. Now nah, we'll be back after this. When it comes to protection against viruses and malware, you can never be too careful. That's why I use Essential Business Solutions. Essential Business Solutions provides quality IT solutions. No more getting bogged down in destructive IT issues. Now I can put my focus back on my business. And set up a consultation today. Easley's Liquid Fertilizer is your family-owned and operated custom spraying business. We can help you keep your crops healthy and your yields high with our professional spraying services. We will come to your farm, land, business, and apply the exact amount of liquid fertilizer or chemicals you need. Not only spraying, we now offer tillage and seeding. We use the latest technology, the highest quality equipment to make sure your land is getting the best possible care. Being licensed and insured, we take care of the hassle. If you have one acre or even 10,000 acres, we have you covered. So don't wait. Contact us today at 214-837-2206 to get started. 8.50 left here in the first half. It's going to be fourth and goal from the one. It's Caden Landry trying to make his way off the field now. While we've got a quick second, I want to tell you about our friends, Triple Crown Roofing. They are your local roofing experts from repairs to complete roofing systems. With competitive prices and free consultation, they are the easy choice when it comes to roofing. Contact Triple Crown Roofing today at 903-689-0800. Triple Crown Roofing. Roofing done right. Ryan, curious to see what uh, the Cowboys offense decides to do here on fourth and goal. Of course, Caden Landry, you would think, would probably be the player who the ball would be going into their hands in this situation, but, of course, not on the field for this play. But they do very much look like they're going for it. Fourth and goal from the one. It's a give. And they're saying he's in. It's going to be a two-touchdown lead for the Carter Cowboys. Tyler, that's Demarion Boozer. Okay. Yeah, Larry Honestly, I'm not, I'm not down there. I'm right. not, you know, I can't see the line. It did look like he, he you know – we reached the line to gain yeah. on that for the touchdown. Yeah. And so, it looked like it for sure. Dallas Carter, three possessions and three touchdowns. Been pretty efficient so far. That was blocked, blocked, Ryan. Tyler. Geo just trying to find it. 
Just fall down, Tyler. Just fall that's, down, that's two, yeah. That's two points if you get tackled at that point. Yep, just fall down, and he does. So it's going to be 20 to 7. Welcome to Sable Provisions, where we go above and beyond to create an extraordinary shopping experience for our valued customers. Our store is not your ordinary men's boutique. It's a paradise for the modern gentleman seeking style, relaxation, and enjoyment all in one place. Step inside and discover a carefully curated selection of Texas-made products and unique vintage attire that exudes charm and character. Kick back and relax in our exclusive men's lounge and take advantage of our top-notch grooming services. Our team aims to create a perfect spot for camaraderie and relaxation. So, whether you're looking to elevate your wardrobe or want to indulge in a little pampering, Sable Provisions is the place to be. 8.40 left in the first half, and after the blocked PAT, it's going to be 20-7 to 7 Dallas Carter lead. For the Wildcats, got to go uh, Got to go. answer back. Yeah, you want to get seven here. You know, I will say Silver Springs, we've seen it all year. They're very touchy-feely in a lot of starts of games. Uh, you know, they're – I know it's cliche to say that, oh, they're a second-half team, but I think that Silver Springs truly does – come out defensively with, with a much better game plan. Uh, and so they, they'll hopefully have an answer for uh, Dallas Carter's offense. It will be interesting to see, you know, you saw Caden Landry, he kind of generally walked to the sideline. You don't know how serious uh -huh. that injury is. Obviously, we hope that he's okay, but yeah. that, that going forward could play a, a huge role in tonight's game. It could as Hare returns to about the 25. Before we see the Wildcats again, I want to tell you, Discount Wheel and Tire at Silver Springs offers a full line of Michelin tires. When you're looking for the right tire, the choice is easy. Michelin packs more science into their tires to bring together safety, durability, fuel efficiency, and performance without trade-offs. Match a right tire with the right service today. Discount Wheel and Tire, proudly serving our Wildcats for over 25 years. First and 10 from the 25, 8.33 left in the first half. Brady keeps himself, now passes out to Hare. And it's a big game from Hare, up to about the 38. There's a late flag. And yeah, like you said, very, very, very much hoping that everything's okay with uh, Caden Landry over there. It will be interesting to see what they call on this. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be on Skylar Lewis for some sort of, some sort of unsportsmanlike. I will say the Dallas Carter player's helmet came off. You are not allowed to continue play with no helmet. That is actually a flag. So... Don't know what they're going to call here, but it could go could go either way. Which is exactly what they're talking about. Uh -huh. They're talking about, well, how'd the helmet come off? Right. Probably Schuyler. Uh, but he can't continue. He can't continue to play defense with no helmet. Yeah, and this one requiring some uh, some talking <laughs> yeah. over. There's kind of there's kind of some detective work to do in this one. You know that last play, Brady, he has the option to hand that. Uh -huh. He has the option to pull that and run it, and he has the option to pull it, but he's got that that bubble screen on the outside, and he he took that one, and I, I like that. You got to have a lot of trust in your quarterback yeah. to be able to run that because that can get dangerous quickly. Uh, but obviously Brady Brady does a good job of taking care of the football. Yeah, we've seen that uh, play call a number of times this year, but we've seen it used pretty sparingly. I feel like. It looks like we finally got something figured out. Let's see what it is. Yeah. <laughs> the easy thing to do is just, you know, call it on both teams. Uh -huh. They're offsetting. So we're just redoing. Yeah, I, I think okay. that's probably. So it would still be first and 10 from the 25. Which is a bummer because it was a nice gain from Jackson Hare there. I think enough for the first down, or close to it anyway. But to quote Kanye West and Corey Seager, guess we'll never know. So we'll do it again, first and 10. Malachi Rowland in the backfield, Grayson Reams in motion. Quick pass out to Skyler. And some good blocking there from uh, Jackson Hare. Can of eight. Definitely in the game plan to get Skyler going early. Uh, I think I do think he's his best when he's getting touches early. He you know kind of let's get those stats up. Let's get the let's get the morale up. 
And uh, Skyler, obviously, you know, a couple weeks back, set the Sulphur Springs single game receiving record yeah. with five catches, 264 yards. Uh, and I am I'm no mathematician, but that is quite the uh, it's yards solid. per catch <laughs> average. Second and two. Out to Hare quickly. Hare's got enough for the first down. I'll tell you, this is the most I've seen us, you know, we, we throw screens, which I, I always talk about. That's an extension of the run game. Those are those are good completion getters, you know, drive starters. But we're running that a lot more than we normally do. Uh, and so something something we've seen with the Dallas Carter defense, you know, screams, hey, man, let's, let's make them come downhill and tackle. Yeah, we are doing that a lot more than usual, it feels like. It's first and ten up to the 38. I haven't seen the run game quite as much as usual either, it feels like. Dropping back to pass. Looking for Skylar Lewis. He's got him. Skylar up to the 45. Looks like kind of had to wait on that one for a second. Yeah, he you know, they're running, they're running zone right there. The cornerback passes him off to the middle. And, and Skylar, you see that big gap in the middle. He's kind of using the referee yeah. as a pick player there. But just find that little niche in the middle of the field. And, and Brady Driver, obviously him and Skylar Lewis have a great relationship. And so that that's easy pitch and catch to move the sticks. Yeah, and that one brings it up to the 46. The give to Roland. Brought down quickly. Calling that a gain of about one, though. Or maybe even two. Yeah, gain of two up to the 44. So it'll still be rolling out there. Lewis on this side, Heron Adams on the far side, and then uh, Reams in the B-back roll. Brady thought he had the free play. I'm not sure that he did, but he gets the completed pass out to Lewis regardless. I didn't see a flag. Uh, it did. The demeanor looked like they thought they had a flag. Uh -huh. But I'll uh, tell you, if you can complete the back shoulder pass, uh, especially at this level, you're, you you can't cover it. it right. If you've got a quarterback that can put put it on that outside shoulder, and, and you know, Skyler Lewis is a guy that obviously he's a he's a man to man nightmare. Uh, that's not coverable if you can run that successfully. The counter to Roland. Roland's still going all the way up inside the 15. They're going to be in the Bell Concrete Red Zone for the second time tonight. Tyler, what did we call that last year? Because I think that, the delayed I, counter. The delayed counter yeah. to, to Malachi. Yeah, we I don't know that we've seen that this year. We saw it I don't last know that year we have a either. ton early. I like it. Great time to deploy that. Yeah, it's probably my favorite play yeah, from last that, year. Yeah, that worked really well with Malachi. That kind of started the whole Malachi Roland is rolling uh -huh. uh, campaign. And he is. That went up to the 13. First two, and two tight ends set here, kind of your jumbo package. Play clock down to eight. To give to Jefferson. And Dallas Carter sniffed that one out quickly. It's going to be second and 11. Getting Adams and rolling back out there. Curious to see what the uh, the play call here is. Yeah, you're going to leave Grayson Reeves out there. Could use him as kind of a sixth offensive lineman. Heron Adams on the far side. Lewis on this side. Lewis in some... Tight coverage, it looks like, but Brady rolling out the other way. And Hare. Looking for Hare. Wide open. And he's yeah. got him. I was going to say pre snap, so I really liked Hare in the slot because it was obviously man to man. That that single high safety is really shading over to Skylar Lewis' side, and he's got to do that. But, you know, you roll out to the right. We called the right play at the right time, and Jackson Hare is wide open. That's pretty open. <laughs> That's pretty open. It is. Touchdown number four on the season. For Jackson here. It's a 21st passing touchdown for Brady. 41 total. Good snap, good hold, and good kick. And with 534 left in the half, it's gonna be 14 to 20. Since 1927, Alliance Bank has been serving customers throughout North Texas. Our community banking roots run deep, and we are here to serve you. 
Welcome, my name is Keith Shirtliff, and I am the market president for Hopkins County. Here at Alliance Bank, we offer all of the products and services you would expect from a large, impersonal national bank, but with the personal service you would expect from a community bank. So give us a call, stop by, or reach out through AllianceBank.com. We look forward to serving you. So the 14-yard catch from uh, Jackson Air makes it 20 to 14. Now Brady's got Dirk touchdowns this season, 41. That one filled it at about the 30. And going to down it there before Carter takes he over. He doesn't for the, seem to think that he called fair catch. Yeah, I was. I, I didn't see it be called that way, but well, the rest take talk this over. I'll tell you about our friends at uh, Muddy Jake's. They're your home for delicious food and the best sports entertainment. With a lively atmosphere, friendly service, and great prices, Muddy Jake's is the perfect place to watch the Sulphur Springs Wildcat game every Friday night. I also want to shout out our friends at BT Medical. You can go visit their store where you can find wheelchairs and hospital beds as well as many other necessary medical equipment. And don't worry, if you can't leave the house, they offer convenient delivery and 24-7 on-call services. Keep your business local with BT Medical. Supply and equipment with care. 531 left in the half here. Big defensive possession here for the Wildcats because... You know, Dallas Carter, they, they deferred to the second half. So if they yeah. get points here, they're going to get the ball to start the second half. Tyler, I want to know, no Caden Landry. No, 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 the Wildcats deferred. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. Okay, my bad. So. Yeah, no, no Landry. You're right. Still, so we, uh, we, we did start on defense. Still so the Marian Wildcats deferred. Are out there. You want to you stop them here. Right, right. Get a chance to score uh -huh. at the end of the half so that you, you start with the ball second half. Just a gain of one from Boozer there on first down, second and nine. And Patterson keeping himself on second down. And he is gone to the crib. That is a 69-yard touchdown, Ryan, from Cam Patterson. You know, I was going to make a comment. I was, you know, no Caden Landry. Obviously, we don't know what that injury is yet. Uh, and and how, how, is, how is Dallas Carter going to respond? Uh, obviously. They're going to respond really well, and that's the third rushing touchdown tonight uh -huh. out of the quarterback. Yeah, I'm trying to do some quick math real quick. Quick math real quick. On touchdowns alone, Patterson is going to have about 100 yards rushing tonight. PAT is good. Makes it 27-14. J. Hodge Chevrolet, we have the most awarded vehicles at the most awarded dealership. We are proud to offer an extensive selection of new and used vehicles. Our knowledgeable sales staff is ready to help you find the car of your dreams. We also provide a top-notch service experience with our state-of-the-art service center and our award-winning team of certified technicians. We're such big supporters of the Silver Springs Wildcats that we are even located on Wildcat Way. Find new roads to J. Hodge Chevrolet. Give us a call at 903 307-2077. Don't ever pay. Go see Jay. 450 left in the first half here. And we've already got a 27 to 14 game. A lot of points being scored in this one. And Cam Patterson's been a beast. I said you were going to see 60 points in this one. You are already at 40, 41. I knew you were doing something over there. I couldn't figure out if, what yeah, you were doing the math. Yeah, 41 with four minutes to go in this half. I'd almost go as far to say that I don't think we're done scoring this half just yet. Yeah, I'm not sure we are. Jackson Harefield's at the 11, or at the 5, rather. My apologies. And takes it up to the 31. So with 442, the Wildcats will take over from there. I want to tell you about Clayton Homes. Clayton Homes at Sulphur Springs is hiring home building team members. Home building team members starting pay is $25 an hour with opportunities to grow. They provide excellent benefits, including paid time off and volunteer time to support causes that you care about. Join their team and build your career with Clayton. If you're interested in applying today, call 903-439-0242. Me and Corey got to go give them a visit the other day, and uh, that is definitely a team that you want to be a part of. Producer Corey said very much so. Starting this drive from the 31. 
Kind of a bunch set for the Wildcats. Brady dropping back. Gets rid of it. He's got Adams on the sideline. And it's complete. That's a big-time catch, Kyler. Great job by Brady Driver to find the open receiver, and Adams. It, and that, I mean, you know, up the sideline like that, that's a big-time catch. Yeah, I couldn't tell if this was some improvis improvisation. <laughs> that's a big improvisation. Word. But a great job from Adams to kind of put himself in a position where if it's thrown my way, you know, almost like you're blocking out in, in basketball for a rebound, just setting himself up to where only he'd be able to get it. Great throw on the run from Brady there. First and 10 now at the 48. Brady's got Skyler. Now there is a flag on the play. And a, and a late flag. A lot, a lot of commotion on the other side of the ball. We got our first ejection of the night. Tyler, we had some, we had some punches thrown to the Wildcats. We had some punches thrown to our own teammates. That was that was an interesting moment. It was. Still talking this one over. I feel like we've gotten a lot of ref discussion tonight. Well, there's a lot to dissect there in is. that one. Uh, I know we didn't show it uh, on camera completely, and that's probably that's probably for good measure. Uh, but that was there was a lot going on in that one. So it's a five-yard penalty on the offense and then the 15-yard penalty on the defense. Right? I believe I heard that correctly. Yeah, marking off the five. So it would be interesting to see if this is a first down or not because <laughs> – well, it would be automatic first down, but my point was that you yeah. unit up, you know, it's only a 10-yard gain because you only went right. five back. But first down. Up to the the 38 now. Or the 42, rather. My apologies. First and 10 from the 42. 423 left in the half. Brady gives to Malachi. He's brought down at the 40 with 420 left in the half. It's been a high-scoring one in this one. Second and eight. Brady dropping back, keeping it himself, and brought down immediately. Great job by the Carter defensive line to get him down. Yeah, you know, a lot of times on quarterback draws, you'll see a big three-step drop to kind of really set the defense, you know, thinking, okay, this is a pass. But what it also does is it gives you a little bit of space to see, okay, where, where exactly is the offensive line, and Brady can kind of go from there. Kind of took a minus drop there, which is just a quick drop for, for your quick passing game and, and ended up bumping into the offensive lineman. So it brings up third and eight. 3.20 left in the half. I would I would think, depending on what happens here, probably get a couple tries at this one. But it's that delayed counter again. 
and he gets up to about the 35. It's going to bring up fourth and three. Fourth and three. I, I think that this is perfect Brady, Brady Bulls, Bulls package. Yeah, and that's that's exactly the yeah definitely the grouping that's coming on. The personnel you're going to have out there. And obviously, I mean, don't need to say it, but this this becomes big. No, th this is a big play because you, you want to get points here. We talked about getting points before the half uh, because out of the second half, the, the Wildcats are going to start with the ball. The Brady keep is. is enough for the first down. It's going to keep it moving up to the 28. And it's worth noting at this point, uh, Silver Springs has all three timeouts. Carter has used just one, or have they used any? They haven't used any either. Sorry, I was looking at the yeah, scoreboard. That's the, the yeah, the quarter, yep. Yeah, so both teams with all three timeouts. Yeah, and you don't want to – I'm not saying you, you wouldn't ever not score here if you have the opportunity, but mm -hmm. you don't want to score – too fast right. uh, and give Dallas We've Carter. We've seen how quickly they can move the ball as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 60, 69-yard touchdown out of the quarterback, that happens quickly. Uh -huh. uh, and so be be best not to give the Cowboys too much time. The give, and he's brought down quickly behind the line of scrimmage. Down back to the 31. I, I do like the dosage that we've seen of Malachi tonight. Yeah, I agree. And, and, and even in the passing game, uh, mm -hmm. I think that he does a great job catching the ball on the outside. Uh, and you put you put the defense in a in a bind because you've got a linebacker covering you know a running back that's most likely faster than them, and so I I, I like the I like the move out of the Wildcats. Y'all don't go anywhere after this. We got a great halftime show brought to you by A and S. Ready dropping back, looking Skyler's way. Wow, Ryan that's Skyler has yeah. got it. Yeah, that that's a. I actually focused on Skyler before the snap, well. just just seeing where he was going to be. And I didn't feel like he was really all that open. Uh -huh. uh, but obviously a lot of trust in number six. Brady finds him over the middle. And really a Dallas Carter defender kind of draped all over him. Still made the catch, yeah. It's going to bring them into the Bell Concrete red zone once again. That's going to put Skyler well over the 100 mark. Uh, yeah, and he's probably close half. to the uh, 1,000 mark on the season. Again, yep. I believe it was yep. 123 that he needed uh, coming into tonight's game. Brady keeping himself, trying to make it to the outside. Now there is a flag thrown in the backfield. Brady had gotten up to the five, but it's we'll, almost uh, certainly in offensive penalty territory. Yeah, you would think. Yep. Usually, when the ref, <laughs> usually when the ref behind the quarterback throws a flag. Uh, mm -hmm. That one nine times out of ten is going to be on the offense. That's a big penalty because that, that that was a great first down call. Uh, now you're looking at yeah. not, qu not quite first and 20, uh, but almost first and 20. And not only that, because the the distance to reach is at the three-yard line, I mean, it's almost a first and goal from the 20-yard line. Right. Clock is running. Jackson Hare in the backfield here, Malachi in the slot. Brady keeping it himself. He gets a lot of the yardage back before sliding inside the 10. And the Wildcats are going to go ahead and use their first time out. At Cody Drug, we believe in providing exceptional customer care and convenience. We do this by offering unique and comprehensive services unlike big chain pharmacies. With our MedSync program, our customers can schedule a day to pick up all their medications at one time. We also offer vaccines and B12 shots to keep you healthy and protected. Take advantage of our fast and reliable delivery service straight to your front door. We're a team that is focused on helping our neighbors and adding value to this community. Make an easy transfer to Cody Drug today. At Cody Drug, we're committed to earning your trust. 29 seconds left, and now, now after the big gain on first down, the, the Wildcats are going to have a second and six from the eight. Ended up being pretty close to the original yeah. uh, first down. Yeah, I mean, a second and six is perfectly – Yeah, and, you know – That's you, even a decent gain on first down. You, you know? might ask, you know, why they let the clock get down so low before they call timeout. But, at fr you know, from from the eight-yard line, there, there's really not a whole lot that can run out 29 seconds mm -hmm. uh, in, in the plays, the two, the two or three plays that we're going to run here. And it's almost looking like a Brady Bulls package. Again, it's a second and six from the eight. It is what it's going to be. Yeah. And he gets just to about the five. So I'll bring up 
third and three from the five. Again, because the, the first down marker is at the three. Yeah, and I think, to me, it's four down territory. Uh, you Obviously, the Cowboys have shown – They've shown that they're going to score quickly. They can score quickly. Uh, and so, like I said, we can't count threes. We've got to count sevens. Now, I will say, you could, if it got to that point, you could kick and make it a 10-point Yeah, point we game. do get the ball the second yeah. half. Uh, but I, I really think that I think that Faircloth is he's, – he's thinking about seven here. Yeah, I would think so. And, uh, and I would run the same play. I would run Brady's bull package. I, I just – Get two more tries at it. It's batting about 950 this year. You know it what? Just I, stopped last week. You know what? I wouldn't hate <laughs> to see only because it is third and two right now, third and three. I wouldn't hate to see kind of a slant towards Skylar Lewis. If you don't you get could, it and it is incomplete, the look, then you uh, can try to get on fourth down. I but. would want total, total man coverage, like no, yeah, yeah. no safety shading over to that side. You don't want to put, you don't want to put Brady in a bad position. You know, making a tight throw. Uh, so yeah, if the defense came out and it looked like that, I wouldn't hate it. Uh, but I. I Feel pretty confident in saying we know what's we know what's coming. <laughs> You're probably right. Third and two from the five. It is a Brady keep. Trying to make his way to the outside. We'll see where they spot him. It's, it's gonna be three. very close. The the distance to go is at the three. And it's timeout, Silver Springs. Hi, I'm Erin Neal, the principal agent and owner of Hamby Insurance. I am passionate about serving the local community and the surrounding areas. My goal is to take the hassle out of buying insurance. I want to educate you on what you're buying and help you make an informed decision. Whether it's personal or commercial insurance, my team and I will be here every step of the way to make sure you are getting the satisfaction you need and the coverage you deserve. My promise to you is that we will never hard sell you insurance, use slick sales techniques, or pressure you into making a decision that you're not comfortable with. Call us today at 972-285-0381 to find the best coverage to fit your need. My commitment is to give you unparalleled service, and remember, Hamby helps. Ron, it's looking like a fourth in inches. There's 16 seconds left in the half, and Silver Springs has now used all three timeouts. I would have loved to have seen the measurement there. I feel like high school football, they just refuse nah, uh, to bring out not the chains. Uh, yes, this is the 11th game we've seen this season, and we've never seen the chains out. But going for it like we, like we predicted, play Great call keep. like we predicted, now he's got enough for the first down. He's got enough for the touchdown run. Now that would have been interesting, Tyler, because he he quickly got the line to gain for the first down, but there's no timeouts. Right. And so with 11 seconds. The clock stops long enough just to re. You, you, you got to get everybody you have set. You to get there quickly. Get there set and then spike it quickly. Uh, but Brady Driver handles that. And uh, that, that went about perfectly. That, that's exactly how you wanted to draw it up. With 11 seconds left, Carter probably doesn't have enough time to score. Uh, this one's going to be a six-point ball game if he makes the kick, and he does. He does. 11 seconds left in the half. Carter leads 27-21. Sulphur Springs is hiring home building team members. Join an energetic, collaborative team and play a part in opening doors to a better life for families across the country. Home building team members, starting pay is $20 an hour with opportunities to grow. We provide excellent benefits, including paid time off and volunteer time to support causes that you care about. Join our team and build your career with Clayton. Interested in becoming a part of the Clayton Sulphur Springs family? Call 903-439-0242 and apply today. 11 seconds left here in the half. Y'all don't go anywhere. We have a great halftime show brought to you by ANS. We want to make sure you get to see the Blue Blazes and the state finalist Wildcat Band. And then Ryan and I have a bunch of football to recap as well. That one fielded at the 24. It's on the ground. Picks it up quickly, though. Now he's making his way to the outside. And a good job from Alex, the intern, to get him brought down with four seconds left. Real quick, I want to tell you about our friends. We've been in the Bell Concrete Red Zone all night. Let me tell you about Bell Concrete. They are your hometown concrete supplier, and they've been a part of Sulphur Springs for over 70 years. They are locally owned, 
family-oriented small business, and they are proud to support the communities that they service. Their plants are located in Sulphur Springs, Greenville, Mount Pleasant, and soon they will open a plant in Blue Ridge. For the best quality and customer service in Northeast Texas, give them a call today at 903-885-8072. Shout out Alex the intern for making the tackle there. Tyler kind of, uh, kind of held my breath there for a, a second. Bit. I've, I've seen it a thousand times. That ball hit the ground. Uh, so, so, you know, the return team will fumble, and what happens is is the kickoff team, they, they completely forget about all their assignments. All they can do is see the ball. They're going after that. Uh, and, and Dallas Carter almost made that pretty interesting. Grind the pitch. Just tackling. <laughs> just, just get him down. Just get him down. Okay. And the ball is <laughs> out there at the, uh, at the 49. That is going to do it for the first half. Been a great first half of football so far. Carter leads 27 to 21. Now we have a great halftime show brought to you by ANS Air Conditioning. Are you having problems finding comfort in your own space? Let ANS find a perfect solution for your heating and cooling needs. They've been providing affordable heating and AC repair for over 31 years. Give them a call today at 903 885 8072. Again, got a great halftime show for you tonight. Y'all don't go anywhere, and then Ryan and I will be back to recap everything we've seen. Your family owned and operated hometown air conditioning business. We have been serving the heating and cooling needs of Hopkins and surrounding counties for over 31 years. We work hard to provide award winning customer service on every call, and our friendly service techs are available 24 hours a day. We offer the industry's highest rated products, servicing all brands, whether it's new or existing, residential or commercial. ANS Air Conditioning is here to serve you. Call us today at 903 885 8072 and let us help make your home or business comfortable and more efficient. 2020 COVID, so we both were sick in November. And uh, after we tested negative for COVID, I still didn't feel well. And I had uh, issues in my lungs and I thought, what, there is just something wrong with me. So I had 10% blood flow. And then I had to have a, a defibrillator pacemaker. Uh, well, I was just so shocked because I've never been sick in my life. So I went to Amethyst Healthcare, and so I started having nurses once a week. So they explained to me about my medications. I didn't even really understand my medications. And they're wonderful. And, and when you've never had a healthcare issue or when you're getting older and you start having to take medications, doctors are wonderful, but they don't explain everything to you. And God is good because I am now from 10% blood flow to 60%. My life now is wonderful. I'm back to normal. I love to work in my yard. I've done all my flower beds. We've been at the club now for five years. And if, it, if the sun doesn't kill it, I can grow it. And I've, I have so much fun in my yard. I've got my dog, my family, my husband, my kids. And my, my life really is back to where it was before. Anyone I would recommend them to, I promise. You know I don't recommend unless I really mean it. Welcome to Muddy Jake's, your home for delicious food and the best sports entertainment. We have something for everyone, from live bands on Saturdays, Kids Eat Free Tuesdays, Wing Wednesdays, and Happy Hour All Day on Thursdays. Come for lunch, dinner, or late night snacks. Our freshly cooked meals will make you feel right at home. Whether you're looking for a hearty burger, some tasty wings, or just a cold drink, we've got it all. With a lively atmosphere, friendly service, and great prices, Muddy Jake's is the perfect place to watch the Silver Springs Wildcat game every Friday night. Muddy Jake's, where the food is always hot and the fun never stops. Whether you're looking to shop for the right set of Michelin tires for whatever you drive, brakes, or are interested in customizing your ride with a suspension lift kit, you can rely on Discount Wheel and Tire of Sulphur Springs for accurate, knowledgeable, and friendly automotive and tire services. Since 1994, we have built a solid base of customers and established the reputation of being an automotive repair facility with service you can count on. We believe in personal customer service. We consider it an honor to serve you and our community. For reliable tire and auto repair, look no further than your local discount wheel and tire. Our experienced, dedicated team are your local roofing experts from repairs to complete roofing systems. With competitive prices and free consultation, Triple Crown is the choice when it comes to roofing. Triple Crown Roofing offers the highest quality craftsmanship and customer care, specializing in all commercial and residential roofing systems. We believe in personalized service and are with you every step of the roofing process. Contact Triple Crown Roofing today. Triple Crown Roofing. Roofing done right. 
Gary's Termite and Pest Control Company, we help homeowners and business owners control bug and pest problems throughout the Mount Pleasant, Mount Vernon, Winsboro, Pittsburgh, Sulphur Springs, and the surrounding East Texas areas. Don't let pests take control of your life. Trust our reliable pest control service to eliminate unwanted guests and provide you with peace of mind. Safeguard your property and the well-being of your loved ones with our effective pest control solutions. Call us today to find out for yourself why Gary's Termite and Pest Control is your pest control company. With Weary Pools, your backyard oasis will always be in pristine condition, leaving you more time to relax and enjoy. We have the knowledge and expertise to keep your pool water crystal clear and perfectly balanced, so you can focus on making unforgettable memories with your loved ones. Whether it's routine maintenance, pool repairs, or equipment installations, Weary Pools has you covered. We take care of the hard work so you can simply dive in and have fun. Don't let pool maintenance become a hassle. Contact Weary Pools today and let us handle all your pool service needs. Because when it comes to your pool, only the best will do. Bell Concrete, your hometown concrete supplier, has been a part of Sulphur Springs for over 70 years. We are a locally owned, family-oriented small business. We are proud to support the communities we service. Our plants are located in Sulphur Springs, Greenville, Mount Pleasant, and very soon we will open a plant in Blue Ridge. For the best quality and customer service in Northeast Texas, give us a call today at 903-885-3126. We appreciate your support and go Wildcat. Hey there, Sulphur Springs Wildcats. Pastor Joel T. Meyer here from The Way Bible Church, and we are beyond excited to support you in all things this year. Whether it's on the field, in the classroom, or in your personal lives, we are here cheering you on every step of the way. Also, we want to extend an invitation to each and every one of you to join us at The Way Bible Church on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. or 1045 a.m., also on Wednesday nights at 615 p.m. At The Way, we are all about experiencing life change. We have a vibrant community awaiting to welcome you with open arms. Join us at The Way Bible Church church and let's embark on this journey of transformation together. Let's go Wildcats. ANS Air Conditioning is your family owned and operated hometown air conditioning business. We have been serving the heating and cooling needs of Hopkins and surrounding counties for over 31 years. We work hard to provide award-winning customer service on every call and our friendly service techs are available 24 hours a day. We offer the industry's highest rated products, servicing all brands, whether it's new or existing, residential or commercial, ANS Air Conditioning is here to serve you. Call us today at 903-885-8072 and let us help make your home or business comfortable and more efficient. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for joining us tonight live from Hanby Stadium in Mesquite. We've got a good game for you with Dallas Carter leading 27-21 to at the half. The Wildcats band and Blue Blazes are set to perform here in just one second. We keep talking about uh, being here at Hanby Stadium. I want to give a big shout-out to Aaron Neal, who's the principal agent and owner of Hanby Insurance in Rockwall. Aaron began her career back in 1999 and was born and raised in the Dallas area. If you're in the Rockwall or Dallas area, give her a call at 972-285-0381 to see how she can help you today. I also want to give a big shout-out to our friends over at Cody Drug. They provide a unique and personalized experience that big chain pharmacies just can't match. They also offer vaccines and B12 shots. Be sure to take advantage of their convenient delivery services as well. Make the easy transfer to Cody Drug, Cody Drug today. Also, another friend of ours I want to tell you about are Jayhawk Chevrolet. They have the most awarded vehicles at the most awarded dealership. Their knowledgeable sales staff is ready to help you find the car of your dreams. Jayhawk Chevrolet are even such big supporters of the Sulphur Springs Wildcats that they're even located on Wildcat Way. Find new roads with Jayhawk Chevrolet, and remember, don't ever pay. Go CJ. Ryan, we got a couple minutes before uh, the Sulphur Springs Band and Blue Blazes get started. Uh, how do you feel about what we've seen so far? You know, I feel good. Obviously, uh, that, that score at the end of the half was huge for the Wildcats because uh, you, you got down 21-7 to 7 
Uh, it looked like Dallas Carter was just simply unstoppable. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you don't count that last one play, uh, we've yet to stop him on a on yeah, an offensive true. possession. That is uh, true. And so Silver Springs is definitely going to have to go to the drawing board in the locker room. But I said it earlier, Silver Springs defensively, they, they usually come out with a really good game plan. And so they're, they're going to have to figure out how to stop the quarterback uh, from getting off to the races because it, it, it just seems like he's been too much – uh, too much of an offensive fire firepower for the Dallas Carter Cowboys. Uh, offensively, you know, I, I think pretty smooth so far. I don't, yep. I don't have any, I don't have any complaints uh, you, for the most had to part. Punt just the once. Yeah, and I think, I think Brady's been smart with the ball. I think Malachi, we've done a good job getting the ball in his hands. And then obviously Skylar Lewis has done, he's done what he normally does, and yeah. that's that's make that's make plays with the ball in his hands. Yeah, Brady, a pair of uh, rushing touchdowns tonight and then a 14-yard passing touchdown to Jackson Hare. For Dallas Carter, three rushing touchdowns from Cam Patterson, one of them 25 yards, one of them 7 yards, and another 69 yards. And then Boozer had the one-yard uh, rushing touchdown as well. Looking like we're going to get the, uh, the Sulphur Springs band in just one minute real quick before they do, and Ryan and I will step back out of the way for a minute. want to give a shout-out to our friends at Alliance Bank here at Chad's Media and Front Porch News. We know the love and support that Alliance Bank has for the Sulphur Springs Wildcats. Stop by and see them on the square or use one of their many convenient drive through services. You can also visit AllianceBank.com for all your financial and banking needs. Give them a call at 903 885 Two one eight seven. Y'all don't go anywhere. We're gonna get to the rest of the halftime show, and then the Sulphur Springs Wildcats will get the ball to start the second half. Lily Glenn. Co-captain, 
Carter Carlson, and Captain Jackie Monroy. The Blazes want to send a special shout out to their Blaze of the Week, Brittany Evans Allen, and their Spirit Girl of the Week, Karen Fagan. They'd also like to highlight their Spotlight Teacher of the Week, Mrs. Megan Tingle. The Blazes are under the direction of Meredith Dial and Assistant Director Shaley Caldwell. Now, join the Blazes as they perform a rocking streamer routine to Party Rock Anthem.
and bring home the fifth place state trophy. Thank you to all who have helped along the way. Go Wildcats! And we are back live from Hanby Stadium here in Mesquite, ready for the second half of action. Dallas Carter leads 27 to 21. Silver Springs will get the ball. Ryan, I want to get your questions on a, or your thoughts on a few things, but real quick, I want to give another shout out to Bell Concrete. They're your home concrete supplier. And they've been a part of Sulphur Springs for over 70 years. They're a locally owned, family-oriented small business, and they are proud to support the communities that they service. Their plants are located in Sulphur Springs, Greenville, Mount Pleasant, and soon they will open a plant in Blue Ridge. For the best quality and customer service in Northeast Texas, give them a call today at 903-885-3126. Ryan, obviously Wildcats do get the ball to start the second half, and because of the blocked PAT earlier, it would actually give them a chance to, to take the lead. Yeah, and, and we see it a lot of times, Tyler. It, gosh, it seems like so many games we've had a missed extra point, whether it be us or the opponent. But so many times that comes down. It, it changes your strategy on things, you know. we got to go for it on two here. Or, you know, hey, we're going to go for it. We're going to go for two here because this really can put us at a huge advantage. Uh, and so definitely definitely plays a role into it. But, yeah, you get the ball to start the second half here. Uh, that The touchdown at the end of the first half was massive uh -huh. because of that. Uh, and I, I think that the big – I think the elephant in the room is, can we stop Dallas Carter's offense? Can you get offense? a stop, yeah. Uh, I think that we've shown that we're, we're able to score. Uh, we can do it, you know, I won't say maybe not as quickly as a 69-yard scamper right. to the end zone, uh, but we've shown that we can score. We've just got to we've got to play some defense. Now, unfortunately, it very much looks like they might be having to do this without Caden Landry for the second half, which if that's the case, that's awful. Caden Landry, an incredible player, love getting to watch him. But it looks like their offense is very good regardless. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, of course, Boozer was the one that came in, number 21, and he had a, a rushing touchdown of his own. 40% of your total offense uh, not being a part of the second half is definitely a big blow uh, for, for the Cowboys. But – they're going to adjust. Uh, they're going to have a next man up mentality. I think Boozer can definitely handle it. Uh, and obviously the quarterback is is a very gifted runner. And here come the Silver Springs Wildcats for the second half. Jeff Stevenson, the one leading the charge, as he did earlier tonight. Again, we want to thank ANS for bringing us the halftime show. Ryan, we say the cliche a thousand times. We've already said it once, but I, I think it very well comes down to, like you're saying, get a stop. And oh, it, it, it's it's obviously shaping up that way. I mean, we're 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 trading big offensive blows here. We're mm -hmm. not haven't done a great job stopping them. They've stopped us once. It's also uh, looking like we both undershot a little bit on our final score predictions. So I said, thir I said 38, 34. Yeah, and I think no, I said 35, 28. No, the the winning team is going to score more than 38. Quite literally, uh, it would be one. impossible to finish 35, 28 at this point. Yeah, the 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 winning team is going to be, I would say, at minimum in the 40s. In yeah, this I would one. think so. Again, it looks like we've got a, a ton of people watching with us tonight, so we definitely appreciate every single one of y'all, whether it be on Front Porch News or Chad's Media. Either way, we uh we love love having y'all. Let me ask you this, Tyler. Hanging we've seen 40, us? seen 48 points in that first half. Can we get to 80 total points in this one? You think it's going to be that high-powered? I hope so. Yeah. That'd be a, it's gonna, a ton it's, of fun to it's watch. It's going to be a fun second half. I, I think that think that Silver Springs, they do a great job out of the locker room. Uh, I think Dallas Carter is going to have a great game plan put together. Yeah, and you and I had said it uh, would come down to the final drive or the final play, and as we keep saying, I mean, very much 
looking like that could be the case. We're ready for the second half of action. The Cowboys of Dallas Carter currently lead 27-21, and they will be kicking to the Sulphur Springs Wildcats. Would love to start this second half off with a big uh, special teams play. Oh, yeah. One kind of a line drive fielded at the 15. Jackson Heron with his biggest return of the night so far, getting that one up past the 30. So Silver Springs is going to take over before they do. Want to shout out our good friends at Sabo Provisions. They go above and beyond to create an extraordinary shopping experience for their valued customer. Their store is not your ordinary men's boutique. It's a paradise for the modern gentleman seeking style, relaxation, and enjoyment all in one place. Go see them on the square. We've got a player down. is Bill Holt, and along with my business partner, Tommy Anderson, we own BT Medical in Sulphur Springs. In our store, you can find lift chairs, hospital beds, and wheelchairs, along with many other necessary medical equipment. We even have a respiratory therapist with a staff willing to help you with your CPAP, so you can get that healthy rest your body needs. If you can't leave the house, we offer convenient delivery and 24-hour on-call services. From all of us at BT Medical, thank you for shopping with us, and please keep your business local at 201 Linda Drive in Sulphur Springs. Remember the name, BT Medical, supplying equipment with care. Welcome to our family-owned hardware store since 1994. Here at Hooten's Hardware, we offer a wide variety of tools, materials, and supplies for all your home, business, and outdoor projects and repairs. With over 40,000 square foot of materials in stock, we're sure to have everything you need for any job. We only carry the highest quality products because your satisfaction is our top priority. Our staff is knowledgeable and experienced and happy to assist you in finding the right materials for your next project. So stop in and experience the Hooten's hardware difference today. And remember, we're more than just nuts and bolts. Ryan, we've still got a, uh, a player on the field here with just 11.52. I mean, as soon as this second half started, obviously hoping that he is all right while we're uh, – Got a second, though. I want to tell you about our friends over at Easley's Liquid Fertilizer and Custom Pasture Spraying. They are a family-owned and operated business that provides year-round custom agriculture spraying services of farms, ranches, and acreages. Owned by Rodney Easley, they are huge supporters of the Silver Springs Wildcats, including their son Trent Easley, who's one of the coaches for your Wildcats. As an authorized dealer for Monty's Plant and Soil Products, they can provide everything that your crops and soil need. Their goal is to help farmers be more successful. Give Rodney a call at 214 837 2206. Also want to shout out to our friends at Essential Business Solutions. Your organization's network and IT problems can come out of nowhere. Let Essential Business Solutions do all the IT work for you. From managed IT services, disaster recovery, and backup solutions, new hardware and other IT services as needed. Give them a call at 903-335-7581. Essential Business Solutions. They make technology accessible. Ryan obviously didn't really get to get play underway here in the second half as there was an injury on the kickoff and very much hoping everything's going to be okay there. While we still got... COVID, so we both were sick in November. And uh, after we tested negative for COVID, I still didn't feel well. And I had uh, issues in my lungs and I thought, what, there is just something wrong with me. So I had 10% blood flow. And then I had to have a, a defibrillator pacemaker. Uh, well, I was just so shocked because I'd never been sick in my life. So I went to Amethyst Healthcare. And so I started having nurses once a week. So they explained to me about my medications. I didn't even really understand my medications. And they're wonderful. And, and when you've never had a healthcare issue or when you're getting older and you start having to take medications, doctors are wonderful, but they don't explain everything to you. And God is good because I am now from 10% blood flow to 60%. My life now is wonderful. I'm back to normal. I love to work in my yard. I've done all my flower beds. We've been at the club now for five years. And if, it, if the sun doesn't kill it, I can grow it. And I, I have so much fun in my yard. I've got my 
dog, my family, my husband, my kids, and my, my life really is back to where it was before. Anyone I would recommend them to, I promise. You know I don't recommend unless I really mean it. We are live from Hamby Stadium here in Mesquite. For anyone wondering the delay, there is a, uh, a player from Dallas Carter that got injured on the kickoff. And uh, obviously, hoping for the best there. The player is still on the field, which is why there's there's been the delay. Got a score update from the, the Paris game, apparently down 28-7 to seven at the half is what we were told. Again, I want to thank every single one of y'all for hanging out with us here on this uh, Friday night for a by-district matchup, a, a rematch from last year's by-district, and it's been as advertised so far, 27-21, to 21, a ton of scoring in the first half. And uh, I don't suspect that scoring to go anywhere in the second half. Ron, how much do you think a delay like this, obviously you, you had the, the half time where you're kind of sitting around waiting for it to get started, then it does get started and you're immediately kind of back in a delay again. Yeah, it, it's it's tough because you kind of you kind of geared up. Uh, you were ready to rock that second half, and now you know 10, 10 15 minute delay. But you, you just hope you hope the young man is is okay. Uh, obviously, yeah. Someone who didn't play football, I never really experienced that. What is it like when when you're the player on the field, and whether it be a, a teammate or an opposing player, when you have an injury like that? I mean, is that that kind of tough to to recover from? Yeah, I actually was on the field for a couple of like scary neck injury moments, uh, and it's kind of just uh, I mean, you just hope he's you hope he's moving something around. You mm -hmm. know, you want you want to look over there and and see that he's moving his arms and legs. I don't know what the injury is here, uh, but he's been down for. For a long time, so I'm sure that it's you know it's it's not great, but right. All you can do at this just moment hope that he's, is just hope he's that okay. everything's yep. okay. Yeah, of course. Still 11:52 left here in this third quarter. Ron, if you're the Silver Springs Wildcats, what are you hoping to see? I mean, obviously more of the same. You've been successful so far, but yeah, I think uh, I think offensively, uh, I think that you got to continue to move the ball efficiently. I think you need to keep. Keep taking care of the football. Uh, now, I guess you can see that on the uh, on the screen. They are bringing the, the ambulance out here to to be able to get the player off the field. Again, just thoughts and prayers with for him and hoping that everything is okay. Passing the competition by leaps and bounds. The team of world-class orthopedics and sports medicine specialists at Christus Mother Francis Hospital Sulphur Springs are experts at caring for bones, joints, and muscles. In addition to treatment, they also provide special programs designed to keep you in optimal shape and improve athletic performance. So whether you're a student athlete or weekend warrior, they'll keep you at the top of your game. Christus Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, taking orthopedic care a step further. DMB Loans, we make the loan process easy. Our competitive rates and quick application process make us one of the largest in the industry. With over 30 years in the business, our team of loan experts will work with you to find the loan that fits your needs. We also offer the best furniture and appliances around with great financing and free local delivery. With low rate loans and high quality furniture, we offer a wide selection of styles and designs plus TVs, mattresses, and much more. Just visit our showroom or give us a call. DMB Loan is your local loan specialist. When you need cash, trust a hometown business. Hi, I'm Josh Boatman, your local and trusted insurance agent. With a family of my own, I understand the importance of protecting the ones that matter the most. I understand that no two families need the same covers. That's why I will make sure to customize plans to fit your specific needs from auto, home, farm and ranch, commercial, and especially life insurance. Don't just take it from me, but from one of my clients who has stated, it has been the easiest insurance buying experience I've ever had. Life insurance is one of the most important coverages that you have to protect your family. If you can protect your home and auto, why not yourself for your family? Ryan, as you can hear the cheering here in the stadium, obviously we are uh, getting the player off the field and everything. and. Uh, that's what the, the cheers are coming from. Very quickly, I do want to tell you about our friends over at Elevate Aesthetics in Silver Springs. They are the elite 
<laughs> they are the elite med spa for all your anti-aging treatments. They offer Botox and fillers as well as B12 shots, skinny shots, and more. Give them a call at 214-205-1333. And remember, getting older is inevitable, but aging is optional. Ryan, I, I want to ask you now, even though you didn't play in the NFL, I think you can speak <laughs> about the NFL. Uh, what are your thoughts on the upcoming weekend? Uh, you know, obviously that, you know, very passionate about the Cowboys. There's probably a lot of Dallas Carter fans that also are Cowboys fans. Huh. Uh, got an easier week. 16 and a half point favorites over the New York Giants. I would think that think that the Cowboys are going to handle business in that one. Do you think they cover in that one? Ooh, that's a that's a tough one. I actually will think yes. I don't don't know that the Giants are going to have the offensive firepower to really put up a fight against the Cowboys, but now that is something you and I talked about on Down and Out this week. For anyone that doesn't know, you I and you and I and Corey host a show called Down and Out here on Wednesday nights on Chad's Media, where we talk all things you know, Cowboys, Rangers, Mavs, NFL, just the world of sports. So we are ready to resume action. Just getting the second half started, 11.52, and the Wildcats are going to start at the 31. Great to see the Carter uh, player that was Absolutely. injured walk off on his own power. Absolutely. So here we go. Let's try this again. Cynthia Brookings said play, praying for the player. We are as well. Absolutely. Whether you're joining us from Sulphur Springs or Dallas Carter or anywhere and anywhere, anywhere and everywhere in between, we appreciate y'all joining us. First and ten from the 31. First snap of the second half. It's a give to Malachi Rowland. No gain, so it'll be second and ten. Cam Jefferson checking back in. Going to have Lewis and Hare on the far side. Or Caden Mitchell, rather. And then Hare and Adams on this side. Brady keeping it himself. Gets a block from Jefferson. A great run there on second down, Ryan, but also a great block from Jefferson to help, uh, to help create that. Now it's up to the 45. As you mentioned, Caden Mitchell out there might see some trickery with him at some point. Haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I would think that you know maybe maybe later in the game they've got they've got something planned with that. Got Reams in motion. To give to Roland. Roland does a good job to fight up. I thought he had gotten about to the fifty, but it looks like marking him at the forty-nine. Make it second and seven, second and six. Tyler, you asked me. I kind of, I kind of paused because I didn't. You know, we were trying to see what was going on on the field. But you asked me what I wanted to see this second half. Uh, I would like to see a longer sustained drive uh, from Silver Springs offense. And the only reason I say that is because we, you, know, you want to wear the defense down. You don't, you don't want it to be the end of the game. And, and the Dallas Carter defense is completely fresh. It's a big run by Brady Driver. Yeah, all the way up to about the thirty-six or the thirty-seven. Yeah, moving quickly. I mean, you've only used a minute and a half right. of the second half. I don't know if you noticed the uh, defense kind of rewarming up down here on the yeah, sidelines. Yeah, no, it, well, it's been a while since they've been out onto the field because, you know, we had the long drive uh -huh. to end the first half, so it's been an hour since yeah. <laughs> since they've been out there. And, of course, there. you and I get the luxury of being up here in the booth, but uh, I have a feeling it's pretty chilly down there. <laughs> yeah. Can't be as cold as it was last year. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was rough. First and ten from the 36. Quick pass out to Lewis. It is complete. Good job from Skyler to gain a few. Now the ball got out, but it got out of bounds. It's got to be close to ten catches for for number six tonight. Oh yeah, that's a good. I would point. I would think he's because he's caught three or four screens, had had the big long one, and then had the you know a couple over the middle in zone coverage. So he he's got to be close to ten. Yeah, I would love to know where his yardage is at as well. I'm sure he's getting close to that 1,000-yard mark. Needed a 123 coming into tonight. I'm sure he still has a little ways to go, but second and eight. <coughs> Lewis is in motion. 
Brady rolling out. Dumps it off to Lewis. And another catch, another gain. That's, That's got to be ten catches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're force feeding him, uh, which is which is always a. Uh, that's a good offensive game plan is get get the ball to Skyler. I would I would say that that plan works. And they are uh, going to say it's enough lot. for the first down. So that's up to the 25. New set of downs now. And it's funny because you kept mentioning the, uh, the long sustained drives. And it feels like you're doing that, but you've used no time off the clock. Not even two minutes into the second half to give to Roland. Cutting back this way. It's going to be right at a no gain for Malachi. So second and ten, still from the 25. Looks like Cam Jefferson is coming on the field. I think he's only had one carry tonight, so I wouldn't I wouldn't mind this second half mm -hmm. seeing. Yeah, bigger back. He's tough yeah. to bring down, especially as the defense. And in the second half, you know, we yeah. saw in the Liberty Alu game that in the second half, gosh, had like he, he had 150 yards. Yeah. 150 yards in one half. He's just a bigger guy that wears wears down on the defense in the second half. It was going to be play action. Brady keep it in himself though. And it ends up being a nice gain there on second down. Gets up from the 25 to about the 19 or so. This is going to bring up a third and four. Third and three, rather. Four down territory right here, Tyler? I would think so, think yeah. So. Yeah, I agree. Now, I will say a field goal would make it a field goal game. Right. But... I just think I don't know. It kind of like the kind of like the Philadelphia Eagles. They just mm -hmm. they've committed to third and fourth and short. We're we're running our play. You know it. I know it. The American people know it. This is what's happening. Uh, but that that's what we're sticking with. Speaking of right there, Brady Brady's bull package. That Boom, is what they down. run. And it is enough for a first down. So the Wildcats are once again in the Bell Concrete Red Zone. Ryan, all week long, we build this as the rematch, and it, it has not disappointed so far. Oh, and we knew it wouldn't. I mean, it's it's almost certainly going to come down uh, to one of the last possessions. First and 10 from the 14. I don't mind the first down shot here. Uh, looks like Jackson Hare's got a, he's got a decent look up top, but. The Brady keep. And it's a big gain on first down, Ryan. But that play works too. It does. Just so efficient. I mean, Brady. Brady's just—he's a bigger quarterback. He's athletic, uh, and it just seems like he's able to fall forward for that extra two or three yards. Now they're saying this is going to be second and one, Ryan. I'd run it again. Oh, and we're actually going to get our first timeout of the second half. Concrete, your hometown concrete supplier, has been a part of Sulphur Springs for over 70 years. We are a locally owned, family-oriented small business. We are proud to support the communities we service. Our plants are located in Sulphur Springs, Greenville, Mount Pleasant, and very soon we will open a plant in Blue Ridge. For the best quality and customer service in Northeast Texas, give us a call today at 903-885-3126. We appreciate your support, and go Wildcats. Second and one from the five. Still 7.47 left here in this third quarter. Tyler, I, I understand the time out there. Obviously, Dallas Carter is trying to get a defense in to stop the Brady's Bulls package, but, you know, you can dread it. You can run from it. But destiny arrives all the same, and, well, and we know what's coming here. Especially on a second and one. From the five-yard line, I, I, I don't know that. I mean, you and I both seem to agree. First first half, I don't mind a timeout there, but second half, I, especially in a game this close. It's also it, it's also seven minutes left in the third quarter. Right. I mean, I. It is the Brady Bulls. See, so you, you end up getting the exact same result either way. Yeah. I, and it's I, a touchdown, right? Right. You, you, I don't know. You wasted a timeout there. In I, my it, it feels like it a little uh, bit. Because they were going to run that second, third, and fourth. And if they got the first down, they were going to run the same play, first, second, third, and fourth. The only uh, difference is now you have two timeouts instead right, of three. Right, so Cats, barring a missed extra point, 
going to take the lead here. Yeah, because of uh, a blocked PAT from earlier. And it is good. So now the Wildcats will take the lead 28 to 27 with seven minutes, 41 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Ryan, real quick, I want to tell you about our good friends over at East Texas Physical Therapy. They are a provider of physical therapy and rehabilitative services in Sulphur Springs. After a visit to East Texas Physical Therapy, each patient will know what it means to have service beyond excellence, and they hope that you will return to their facility for all your rehab needs. So after what feels like an eternity, Dallas Carter is going to get the ball again. Is there ever a time where Sulphur Springs considers an onside kick? Not necessarily saying here, just just anywhere. What are you thinking, uh, man? You know that that is a way. That's a way to steal a possession. Uh, and I, I think that I think the risk reward is certainly there. Obviously, if you don't get it, great field position. But the way they've moved the ball, I don't I don't hate the idea. So, Ron, that's uh, now three rushing touchdowns tonight for Brady Driver, which gives him 40 or uh, 22 rather uh, on the season. For the first time this year, he now has more rushing touchdowns than passing. He had been <laughs> right above with the passing all year long, but uh, he is now up to 43 total touchdowns on the that, year. That just goes to show how balanced we've been this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just I, I said it last week. We're not a phenomenal passing team. We're not a phenomenal rushing team. We're just we're really good at both. We, right. we do both very, very, very well. Cam Patterson also with uh, three rushing touchdowns tonight for Dallas Carter. They're going to take over here from the 33. And to give to Boozer on first down, it's a gain of about four or five there. Tyler, I would assume out of the locker room, you know, no Caden Landry on the field, I would assume his night is probably probably over. Yeah, it, it's looking that way. Again, Boozer, a, a great RB, too. You know, Patterson, great rusher in his own in his own right. Curious how much that does change the game plan moving forward, though. <clears throat> Second and six, Patterson keeping himself, cutting back the other way. And Ryan, a great rush on second down. He's still going. Marking him out right at the 30. And that was a, a great rush from that young man. As far as... You talked about speed. You talked about quickness. How about acceleration? Yeah. Uh, he turns on the burners. You know, he kind of, he kind of, kind of jukes around, finds, finds his lane, and then just turns on the jets. Yeah, and they're actually going to mark that out at the 37. Also, very quick reading skills right there. I mean. Yeah, and the play was certainly going to the left, and mm -hmm. he said, "No thanks. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to cut this back right." Yeah, he's uh, well over the 100-yard rushing mark tonight. I think he had that in the first half alone, but granted this is their first drive of the second half. They give to Boozer on first down, and another good pickup. And uh, something that we had talked about earlier in the night, I think we talked about it more so from the Silver Springs perspective, but doing a very good job on first down. It's another gain of four, making it second and six. Of course, makes your job much easier when you can get four or more on first down. Second and six from the 33. Able to break the first tackle. He's still, still going. Up, yep. yeah. I will say, you know, obviously missing Caden Landry, that, that's, a huge, that's a huge blow to the Cowboy offense. But uh, Boozer does bring an element – that uh -huh. I don't know that Caden Landry had. I mean, he's he's a bigger kid. He he he's got he, he's got the ability to kind of drag on two three tacklers on the Wildcats. And right there, you know, you and I kind of looked at each other. Okay, that's that's a gain of zero, and and that was wrong. He, he just he's able to fight through those arm tackles. To me, it's kind of reminiscent of going from a Malachi roll into a Cam Jefferson. Hundred percent. I bring up third and three from the thirty. And he has got enough for the first down, still going. Finally brought down at the 20. So that will put them in the red zone.
I think that was actually a handoff to Cam Patterson. I think it was. Yeah. I was trying to tell <laughs> yeah. if that was right. Yeah, it was. That was uh, that was Robinson to Patterson there. Yeah, you know, we had mentioned in the pregame show and earlier in the night that they do use more of a, a, a two QB system, but we really hadn't we gotten to see it. We have seen it tonight. Yet. No, yeah. no. I had almost forgotten that that, were <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that was the case. Well, I, I would say that this falls under the if it ain't broke, don't fix it yeah, category. Yeah, 100%. Another give on first down. Braxton Wall. And Nathan Andrews you kinda bringing him down. I ripping at that ball. Uh -huh. And I, I, I'm telling you, Sulphur Springs, Dallas Carter, whoever it is, a turnover in the playoffs is uh, – that's exemplified for sure. Yeah, and at this point, given their style of offense, that would be about the only way you could force a turnover, it feels like. Could end up calling that a gain of just one, second and nine. Stopped the clock, though. Second and nine from the 19. Another give to Boozer. And that is a pretty good gain. That's going to make it about third and five. Curious to see what we see on a third and five now. Does look like Robinson is going to be the quarterback mm -hmm. here. No Patterson on the field that I'm seeing. So that suggests more of a throwing down then. No, he is in the backfield. My apologies. Robinson and Patterson in the backfield. Robinson keeping himself this time. He's trying to cut back the other way. Almost brought down, but he stays up. And he's all the way up to about the five. Going to mark him out at the six. First and goal. You know, I don't know how I feel about taking the ball out of out of Patterson's hands, uh, but if you've got multiple guys that can yeah. do it, uh, then why not? Put put Silver Springs in a position where they're having to guess. You know, oh, I've got him. He's mm -hmm. he's he's gonna motion. You know, Especially whatever happens. Especially if you're not gonna have Caden Landry for the rest of the night, that very well might be. There's gonna be some creativity. Yeah. You know, put put make Silver Springs think about Especially it. Especially in a third and five situation that feels yep. like more of a passing down. It is Patterson again, the direct snap to Patterson. And Ryan, from the six-yard line, he is in his fourth rushing touchdown of the night. And that puts him back in the lead. I was going to ask if you think they go for two here, but being up by five, they can get up by six again. Probably no, the same I, don't, recall. I, don't, yeah. I don't think you do it. Yeah. Uh, I, think you, I think you worry about it in a little bit. Again, I'm, I'm pretty positive that that is not going to be the last touchdown for either team. <laughs> Probably um, not. And that one is good. So with 421 left here in the third, Dallas Carter goes back up ahead, 34 to 28. Well, we got a second. I want to give a big shout-out to our friend Katie Adair. Katie, Katie Adair with Janet Martin Realty. When you work with Katie, you get more than just a realtor. You get a trusted partner who is active in the community and cares about you and your family's future. So if you're looking for a realtor who is passionate about finding you and your family the perfect home, be sure to call her at 903-243-2304. Wildcat's going to get a chance to try to go answer back. I guess we've really only seen one stop in this entire game, correct? <laughs> I think that's right, yeah. It's one, a, there's been one punt, yeah. no turnovers, and, and I'm not really counting the – Yeah, you can't count can't that count with the a, one the one yeah. play at the end of the half. <laughs> so one defensive stop tonight. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. I'm not saying that's what we had uh, – exactly <laughs> what we had in mind, but we did jokingly say We it. may or may not have said it, yeah. That one filled it at about the 17. Jackson Hare. Still going. And, Ryan, I don't know if you've noticed that one up to the 41 or the 42. Each one of his each returns. Each one's getting a little bit farther. Uh -huh. Yeah. Jackson does a great job of – it seems like, you know, he's not trying to do too much. He, he, he's just getting what he can, finds his blockers, and falls forward. Uh, but like you said, Tyler, you know, kind of, you know, 25, 30, 35, and that one all the way up to the 40 – looks like the 41 – Yeah, and, you know, it feels like we haven't gotten to see as many returns from Jackson Hare this year as we had seen in, in like, last year. 
but he is a dangerous return man. First and 10 from the 41. To give to Malachi. A great run on first down there. Tyler, this is just, it, it's such a weird feeling. With four minutes in the third quarter, you feel like, not that it's a must score for Sulphur Springs, but they're just, there's been no, no, been, no one's been able to stop each other mm -hmm. on defense. And so it, you got to continue to match the other side or. How much you pressure don't know. does that put on you as an offense? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, with three minutes in the third, it's obviously not must score, but you just, you feel like, gosh, we got to go get seven. But it kind of feels that yeah. way, yeah. It's going to be an empty backfield for Brady, second and three. Keep it in himself. And he's got enough for the first down, a late flag thrown. I'm afraid. Face mask, there we go. Couldn't tell, it was kind of in the middle of, of you know, Dallas Carter was saying one thing, Silver Springs was saying another, but that is gonna be a free 15. And that is big. You'd already gotten past midfield, so after the uh, the 15 yards, that brings this up to the 33. 32, rather. Man, these offenses are moving quickly. They are. <laughs> <laughs> they are wasting no time. You had asked if we could get to 80. Uh, 80 would be tough, but it's definitely not it's definitely not out of the question, yeah. Here it's 62. Uh, I bet we get to 80. Be close, but. Brady keeping himself again. Yeah, it's going to be pretty close to this point. I mean, that would Brady's, be three more touchdowns. So Brady's running hard tonight, man. He, he's. I mean, you can tell. You can tell he really wants to win this one. I mean, I, I think he's playing with a lot of heart. He, he's he's been really good tonight. Clean passing the ball. He, he's keeping things out of trouble. Uh, and when it's his turn to run, he he's getting downhill quickly. Yeah, three rushing touchdowns and a passing touchdown tonight for Brady. The passing touchdown was to Jackson Hare. Second and four from the 27. Malachi in the backfield. Adams on this side. Hare and Lewis on the far side. Skyler in motion. Get to Malachi. And a great job from the Carter defense to bring him back, or bring him down, rather, in the backfield. That's a huge, huge second down loss because, you know, what was second in very four, manageable believe, yeah. is third in. Third and nine now. Third and nine, yep. So here – Got to be. I, I, I would not be surprised to see – I don't know. I would not be surprised to see a run to try to cut this in half and make fourth down more manageable. I do not think you're in field goal range. Yeah, that's that's a big ask. We, we haven't attempted a field goal this long in, in a long time. Oh, yeah, you're uh, looking so at a 49-yard field goal from there. We're screen out to Skylar right now. Brady keeping. Or run the <laughs> – Brady QB draw for a first down. It's going to be close. It's going to be very close. I, at first, I thought it for sure was. Now it's looking like fourth and inches. That's what I'm talking about, though. That that was a just a gutsy. I mean, first down. There you go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I talked about it earlier, Carter. I thought we should get a measurement. Probably should have measured this one. Uh, but this is Texas high school football. Yeah. And we don't care. First down. <laughs> First and 10 from the 23. Clock is ticking. Going to have to, yeah, reset the play. There you go. I'd say run up to the line and snap it as fast as you can, but this isn't the NFL, right. so I think we're good. Brady able to keep it up to the 15. Ooh, there very is late a late flag, flag thrown. That seems like it's way away from the ball, too. I'm not, not sure – Holding on the offense. We'll say all things considered, I think he'll take it because the snap almost looked dangerous. Yeah, you know, Brady kind of bobbled it. So it's going to be first and 20, which is certainly behind the sticks. And, of course, after the uh, – Third and nine was, was tough. Now you're in a first and 20, but trying to keep this drive rolling from the 33. Brady dropping back, looking at Chris Adams. Incomplete. 
Man, that was an exceptionally tight window it was. Uh, that Brady tried to fit that in, and Chris Adams almost made a huge catch. Yeah, and that might be one of the tighter windows we've seen on a pass that wasn't thrown to Skyler Lewis. We've seen some pretty tight window passes to Skyler. But yeah, and that, that's a lot of that's a lot of trust in Adams right there to yeah. be in the right spot, and he certainly was. Just just wasn't able to wasn't able to complete the catch. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Chris Adams, and I, I love that we're getting to see more and more of him. So what are you thinking here, Tyler? I, I, I've now changed. I bet. Now, you, you're okay with three in yeah. this particular situation if you can get in field goal range. Brady dropping back. Just gets rid of it, and great call there to, to get rid of it at the last second. You had asked what I thought. I had honestly thought we were going to see that kind of QB draw where he draws back like he's going to pass and then takes off and run. I'm not sure if that was the design there or if that was out of necessity. But uh, he did go to take off and then very smartly threw it away at the last second. That does bring up a third and 20, though. Man, here, Tyler, I don't know. Because you got to figure that Carter is going to be playing back. You know, they're playing to the sticks. Mm -hmm. I might just toss it out to Skyler Lewis I was and, just, about to and say, just see what we can get. Get the ball in his hands, let him try to you create guy, something. You make a guy miss, mm -hmm. I can at least go get 10. Yeah. Uh, and if you make another guy miss, you're off to the races. You know, it would be hard. I was going to say, if not, you could try to do like a slant or something. But that would be a little bit tougher, yeah, being that just, they're going to be back. Just play it safe here and, and see what you can do. Third and 20. Looking for Skylar Lewis deep. Tyler. He's got him. <laughs> no, oh, incomplete. He did not complete the catch. Incomplete. All year long, Ryan, I have – neither of us, we've always been late making calls just to make sure. The one time I jump out there and – Gosh, great throw, great route by Skyler. Wasn't able to finish it off. <laughs> that's uh, that's tough. That that's one that's one that you certainly, gosh, I know Skyler would love to have that one back. He has made that catch all year. My hot take though, I think you can still go for it on fourth and twenty rather than punting, just because again you're at the thirty three. Yeah, a so if you in, if you get a yards. if you get a touchback, you know it's it's a thirteen yard difference. It was a great job from Schuyler to have beaten the coverage. Yeah, it just didn't survive the ground, and I, uh -huh. and I think the Carter defender might have had yeah, hands so well. was, was on it. Good coverage there. Uh, but I mean, that's a great ball. Schuyler's in a great position. Yeah, the Carter guys definitely got a hand in there, and I, I just six wasn't able to survive the ground. So what are you thinking we're doing here on 4th and 20? Again, it's from the 33. So like you're saying, if you're doing the math, so we always go based off what would be a You're saying, a you're saying do something that mimics some sort of a punt. I don't, I'm just, I don't know that I would throw to the end zone like we just did. Now, I think if you were going to do that with in mind, you wouldn't have gone deep on 3rd and 20. Yeah. You would have tried to get half of it or you know, right. however um, much. But I, I don't know. I think if you go for it, I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. I guess I, I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't know that I would even go for the first down, but then why wouldn't you just punt? So yeah. I, I'll be interested to see what they call here. Fourth and 20 from the 33. Carter, Carter defensive backs are backed way up. We are going to go for it. Brady lets it fly to Skylar Lewis again. That one batted down, and it is going to be a turnover on downs at the 33. Just 29 seconds left here in this third quarter. Before we resume action, I want to tell you about our friends Marcy Gamble and Micah Sheedy over at Amidus Healthcare, both of which have over a decade of experience. Amidus specializes in after-surgery care or after-hospitalization or a new diagnosis of chronic illness. They also offered skilled nursing as well as physical, occupational, and speech therapies on top of medical social work and certified nurse aides. Kind of goes back to that feeling, you know, now you're down to less than a minute in this third quarter, obviously – not over. That's not the point I'm trying to make. I'm just trying to make you really. It, it gets it gets down to the nitty gritty. The Silver Springs defense. Yeah. They got to come up with a stop. You don't want to make this a two possession game. It's going to be a gain of about three or four there on the first down, and I would think that's going to do it for the quarter. Twenty seconds left here. Play clock hasn't started yet. I mean, there's absolutely zero need uh, to run another play before the end of this frame. End up calling that a gain of three, so it'd be second and seven. And Ryan, going into the final quarter, it is a one-score game, and unfortunately this is going to be the final game for one of these two teams. 
both of which I think have had great seasons, both of which have played great tonight. And you hate that one of their seasons is going to have to come to an end, but one of their seasons is going to have to come to an end. Obviously, the winner gets to advance and play Stephenville, and judging by the comments, it seems like we've got some, some Stephenville <laughs> people watching, seeing who they're going to get next week. Yeah, Tyler, you know, I mentioned it in, in the pregame show. There, there's going to be a worthy worthy of a second-round berth yeah. team go home tonight. I think there's two two good football teams on the field playing, uh, but somebody's going to be turning the equipment on Monday morning. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I think we're in. I think we're in for an exciting fourth quarter. I think we are as well, and uh, definitely 12 more minutes for someone to earn the Way Bible Church Player of the Game. The Way Bible Church wants to to extend an invitation to everyone to join them on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. or 10:45 a.m. and also on Wednesday nights at 6:15 p.m. At the Way, they're all about experiencing life change. They have a vibrant community awaiting to welcome you with open arms. Join them at the Way Bible Church to embark on a journey of transformation together. I think at this point, if the Wildcats were to win, Brady Driver definitely kind of leading the way. He's got three rushing touchdowns and a passing touchdown. Second and seven, Patterson keeps himself. Truth Holmes trying to wrap him up, but he's got enough for the first down. That went up to the 45. This and is definitely the point in the game where you got to start maybe trying to poke at that football. Yeah. Uh, if, if, if we're going to keep getting quarterback keepers, you know, maybe he gets lazy with, with his ball security on one of the runs, and, and Silver Springs has got to try to take advantage of that. You know, you're almost at a point now where you're going to have to end up getting two stops. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, you're saying we get one stop, we go down tied up, and mm -hmm. have to stop him again because of time. Yeah, that's, that's, a, uh, that's a good point. First and ten from the 45. Patterson keeps. Laren Vaughn trying to bring him down, get some help. It just seems like even not on his best runs, it's still four yards. Yep. Uh, and that that's obviously going to result in lots of first downs. Uh, if you're if you're any, anything over anything over three yards a carry, is is a successful average. Yeah, if you're getting four yards a, a carry, you're keeping the chains moving for sure. Second and six from the 49. And now suddenly it feels like the clock is moving very quickly. <laughs> Again, Patterson Keevan trying to make his way to the outside. Truth huge Holmes. Play. Huge, huge play. Truth Holmes and, of course, Laren Vaughn. And the two are going to bring him back for a big loss. Right there is just swarm and compete. You know, the out, the most outside guy, you got to keep outside contained. And, and, you know, when he cuts that back, somebody's got to get there. Somebody's got to get, get there to make the tackle. And, Ryan, this becomes a very big third and ten. Uh, yeah, I don't <laughs> – again, I don't, I don't want to – I don't want to jump the gun. I don't want to jump the gun, but it's it is a massive third and ten, game altering third and ten. From the forty-five. <laughs> you give to Boozer. Boozer making his way to the outside. He's got the first down, all the way up to close to the thirty. Just absolutely enormous first down conversion for the Cowboys there. I was kind of surprised to see the give on third and ten. I thought maybe Patterson would keep it himself or something, but. No, that's big, Tyler. Yeah. I mean, if anything, that's that's three more plays to, to run down the clock, however much it goes. And, and now, you know, inside the 30, you're, you're in prime scoring position. Now, if Carter scores here, do you think they probably go for two that time? Be a 12-point game? Eh, I don't know. Nah, you probably just kick don't. it again, yeah. Another give to Boozer. Bounces off the first tackle. He's still going. Finally down at the 18. And Carter once again in the red zone. Nine and a half minutes of football left for one of these teams. 
Again, the winner will advance to area where they will face Stephenville, one of the best teams in the state. Play clock down to five. They give to Patterson. So again, we saw the uh, the combo of both Robinson and Patterson out there. And I'm almost a bit surprised we haven't seen more of that. Be really interesting to see, you know, what what Carter's kicking situation is. Assuming they don't get this, because uh, that would make it a two possession game. And so. Yeah, currently up six. That would make it nine. Yeah, of course, you and I have no idea what the kicking situation is, but that would become very interesting. Robinson passes to Patterson. He's got his way to the outside, and he's all the way up to about the nine. Or nine or the ten, going to be just a yard or two short. Out of bounds with 8.31 left. Third and two. And if you could get a stop here on third down, you would find out the answer to that question. I would think in that situation, they probably do kick to try to make it a, a nine-point game. If they have a kicker, they'll yeah. kick it. Yeah. Because uh, at some point, you've run out of time to score twice. You're going to get a timeout from from Carter. From Carter, yeah. The, now, the play clock was down to one or two. Looked like they, they were able to get it off in time, but, of course, you can't risk the the delay of game there if you're Carter and maybe just want to draw something else up. I don't know. Eight minutes, 29 seconds left in this one, though. we still got a very lively band, the cheerleaders rocking over there. Ryan, what are you saying if you're Coach Faircloth right now? I mean, obviously, you got to – to find a way to get this stop on third down. You know, the thing with with Carters, you have a general – I mean, they are running a lot, but containing them has just been in incredibly difficult. Well, it's just, you know, they've been so efficient with the read option, and if you run that well, the defense can never be right. Right. Because if you're crashing, right. you know, quarterback takes it outside, and obviously he's very talented. That's a tough play to make. But if mm -hmm. but if you if you overdo covering the quarterback – Boozer is, I mean, he's he's a power back up the middle. That That's a hard tackle to make on a third and two situation. So it's really a catch-22 uh, if, if the quarterback reads it correctly. Yeah, and he has done an incredible and job. And that's what they're going to run so here. Far. I yeah. mean, that, that is. Okay, you and I know it. The viewers <laughs> at home know it. Third and two. They're in tackling, but it, it's going to be enough for a first down. Yep, just enough by about a yard maybe. And that brings up a first and goal. From the seven. Eight minutes, 20 seconds left here. Any chance at all we see the ball be thrown? No, nah. absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, there is zero possibility I'm putting the ball in the air. A, the clock stops if there's an incomplete pass. B, uh, we've run the ball just fine tonight. Uh, Dallas Carter. Yeah, more than anything, for me, it's, it's a matter of time at this point. I want that time... I mean, if I walk away with a field goal, I'll walk away with a field goal, but I've wasted almost another two minutes here to give to Boozer on first down. Gain of a couple. Yeah, I mean, if you're Carter, the absolute worst-case scenario of this drive is I, I walk away with a nine-point lead in about, what, six minutes on the clock? Maybe even less than that. Definitely using every second of the play clock. You know, you had mentioned something interesting earlier, but you've definitely gotten to the point now where, like, I'm actively going – Trying to knock the ball out, going for a strip, something like that. Absolutely. Yeah, and Carter very I mean, much is using every second of the uh, play clock. Yeah, play as they should. Yeah. Yeah. We're to the point where you know Carter scores here, Silver Springs go down and score. You're probably have to, you're gonna have to onside kick. You had asked about yeah, the onside you're, kick. You're probably earlier, gonna have to yeah. onside kick. Patterson keeping it in again. He's gonna be short. Yeah, marking him at about the one. It looks like. One or the two. If you get a stop here, things get interesting mm -hmm. uh, because I don't think they would kick it. You think uh, they'd I think, go for I it? I think they'd go for it. I'm kind of curious about that. I, I, 
again, you have no idea of the kicking situation. I would think you do kick just because, you know, again, making it a two possession game, just, but you're I, so close. How often have you been stopped? I get what you're saying. How many times have, yeah. how many times have we held them to, to one yard rushing? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Now you're having to keep them from getting one yard in two attempts. I definitely get the point you're making. Unfortunately, we're never going to know. Boozer. And there is there a flag. There is a flag. That is, oh, Tyler. That it's holding is a really, really big holding. It is a very big holding. That so you're going to have third and goal from the 11-yard 11. 11 line. Boy, that could not come at a more dramatic time. Yeah. So all of a sudden. <laughs> I told you earlier I didn't want to say that a third and ten uh, decided the game. And this one's bigger. <laughs> yeah, third and goal from the 11. I know we talk about have you know keeping your timeouts for for time time constraint situations, but uh, would not be mad if Summer Springs wanted to take a timeout here. But that play well, clock like is getting have low. To use it. Yeah, they got to call a timeout. Yeah, yep. Dallas Carter has to okay. use. That was their final timeout. Unless the scoreboard's incorrect. I know they had used one earlier. Did Silver Springs use a timeout in the second half? I don't remember that. You know, I don't either. We The scoreboard might be incorrect on that one. Either way, Dallas Carter is using what's at least their second timeout of the half. Yeah. Again. I'm, I'm almost thinking that it's their third and maybe, maybe they put one of them as Silver Springs timeout. I don't know. Yeah. We used one? Okay, so. Producer Corey says we used one. As far as we know, I guess the scoreboard is correct. Six minute. One second left here in the in the game. It's going to be third and goal from the 11. While we got a quick second, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at Chick Fil A. Serving quality food has always been the top priority at Chick Fil A in Silver Springs. Whether you're dining in or picking up to go, they guarantee that signature Chick Fil A customer service. And don't forget, they have catering and delivery available for your next Wildcat watch party. Ryan, I got to ask, does does this? change your opinion on, on the kicking situation. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah I, I don't if you don't get any yards here because you last you, you cannot walk away with no points here. Right. It cannot happen because it, it is a six point game. Uh huh. You hadn't stopped Silver Springs in a long time. You walk away and don't make this a two possession game, then you're staring you you know you're staring a bad situation in the face. Uh, technically so, you again, did stop them on their last drive. I but, don't that's true. That's true. But I get what you're saying. But yeah. it, it's still Yes, Silver Springs moving the ball just fine. I 1,000% I agree there. We're about to find out. Third and goal from the 11. Got to imagine they're keeping it in the quarterback's hands. And they are. And he's in from the 11-yard line. Cam Patterson is in with 5.55 left to go. They're going to have a chance to make this a 13-point game. And it's good. My final Dirk reference of the night, 41. 41, 28, Carter leaves with five minutes and 55 seconds left to go. I've been telling you about all of our different friends all night. And one last friend I want to give a shout-out to is that of Clayton Homes of Silver Springs. They are dedicated to helping you find the perfect manufactured or modular home for your family. Whether you're still researching or ready to find your dream home today, their team is committed to answering any questions you may have. Visit ClaytonofSilverSprings.com or give them a call at 903-438-0820 to see how they can make your family's dreams come true. I want to give a big shout-out to everyone that's been watching us tonight, whether you're from Dallas, Carter, Sulphur Springs. We've seen some viewers from uh, Stephenville as well. Big shout-out to the homie Bryce watching back home. 5.55 left to go, Ron. And, of course, Sulphur Springs can score quickly. We've seen that uh, a number of times this year. And now Skyler Lewis going to have to return that one after all of that. And he gets it just to the 14. So not the start to this drive that you were hoping for, but 
Going to have 86 yards to go. And, Ryan, what are we trying to draw up here? I mean, you got to go quick. Something quick. Uh, you know, I obviously don't <laughs> – you don't have to change your offense here. We can do what we normally do. Uh, but it can't take – can't take four minutes. Can't take five minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're going to – it comes down to an onside kick. You score here, you're going to onside kick it. If you get that, obviously you have a chance. And if you don't, then that's probably going to do it. Yeah. Four wide. Brady dropping back. Let's fly in the direction of Jackson Hare. And he gets out of bounds. Great after job getting out of, of bounds there. Yep. Mm -hmm. There needs to be, you know, a sense of urgency. There needs to be a sense of urgency getting to the line, you know, getting the ball to the ref, spotting and all that. But also just just the awareness of, hey, I know there's 540, but we got to score twice. So yes. you got to get out of bounds. You got to. Yeah, and know. I think uh, any time you get to the point where you realize I can't get more yards out of this, I've just got to get out of bounds. Yeah. yeah. Second and one. Brady rolling. Look at towards Chris Adams. He's got him. Chris Adams, huge gain all the way across the 50. Well, I said you asked me <laughs> you asked me what we needed to do, and I said something quick. Uh, two plays and a giant chunk of yards. Chris Adams having a having a great night. Having a great night great for night. sure. We had mentioned that we're probably going to be seeing more of him tonight, and we have. Now they're spotting this at the 47. Oh. Yeah, I really thought, uh, he, I thought yeah. he had a lot more than that. Maybe they're saying he stepped out. But. Yeah, and I think the ref up here definitely spotted it further. But Yeah. Producer Corey trying to call the shots back there. <laughs> <laughs> we did say – we said a, you know, double pass was coming somewhere. Brady keeping it. It's a gain of seven. Gain of eight, rather. Bringing up a second and two. 520 left. What do we start? What do we start this offensive possession with time wise? 555. Really? So mm -hmm. four, 40 seconds. We've gotten well over 40 yards. Yeah, I mean you started at the 16 or the 14. And now you're up to the 39 or the 40. Still going to be a four wide look Cam Jefferson in the back. Out to Skylar Lewis. Big gain there. But instead right, of spinning down, inside, he would have go hoping, down. yeah. And he finally does get out of bounds. So you get the get the first down, and you get the clock to stop <laughs> yeah. anyway. Yeah. I think with a player like Skyler, you're such a playmaker, your automatic first thought is oh, he's always, thinking go score. Yeah, always. yeah no, he's yeah. thinking go score. And much more often than not, it ends up working out right. pretty well for him. Now, I will say, Tyler, we, we did this incredibly quickly. If we could score in the next couple plays, it wouldn't be over if you didn't get the onside kick. That's true. The pass is out to Caden Mitchell, who Corey wanted to make sure we knew was in the game. I was expecting <laughs> Gain of about three there. So it's going to bring up a second and seven from the 24. Looking like Adams on that side, Lewis on this side. You know, again, time time starting to run out. Just 4:20 left to go in this one. It's a 13-point game. Cam Jefferson in the backfield, play action. Brady having to keep himself. Trying to get out of bounds, yep. and he is able to at the 21. So it ends up being just a gain of three, setting up a third and four. 4:05 left to go. Smart play by Brady. Take take the three. Don't don't just throw it away. Uh, but if you can, you know, you got to get what you can get. Get out of bounds. You know, Carter Carter in in the red zone. They're making it tough, passing wise, because those safeties are just bailing out almost immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you're, you know, the receivers have got to sit it down in a window. Brady's got to be on the same page as him. It just it makes it tough. Brady keeping. He's getting some blocking from Cam Jefferson. Should be enough for the first down. It is. So it's going to stop the clock momentarily. Down to 358, Tyler. You'd, you'd love to score in the next, I don't know, 58 seconds or yeah, so. Yeah, you got to go pretty quickly. <laughs> uh, Wildcats are once again inside the Bell Concrete red zone. Now the clock resumes. If I'm Dallas Carter, I'm A, not letting Skyler Lewis be the reason we score here, and B, I'm putting one of those linebackers on a QB spy because Brady, Brady seems to be running around pretty well. 
That's that's got to be rough in the pasture, Tyler. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah no, that's gotta, I, I didn't see the flag. The I was like, no, I guess not. That was considerably late. Yep. And it is. I'm not gonna lie. When he did, I I misread that yeah, as, uh, no, yeah. as intentional grounding. Right. I was like, oh. Right. 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 Two very different things. <laughs> so automatic first down. It's gonna be uh, no. Half the distance to the goal would be to the eight, right? Yes. Yeah, so First half, half the distance. At the eight. Okay. Well, you got four downs here. They're bringing on the Bulls package. First and goal from the eight. To give to Jefferson. Jefferson's still trying to go, finally going to be brought down at the two or the three. Second and goal, 320 left. Looks like they're going to blow, blow that dead, one dead. Yeah. And Faircloth wants to, wants to know why. Maybe some type of substitution. Yeah, like yeah, you're you, you gotta. If you if you move, you bring people on. You you gotta give the mm -hmm. gotta give the defense the opportunity to sub. Now the clock running again. Second and goal from the two, and a 13 point game. And I don't sure, think he's Tyler. gonna get it. You know, Ryan, 60% of the time, it usually works every time. But a rare being stopped short. I do think that they are inevitably going to get this. But, man, that clock is ticking. Yeah, you got to go. Got to go, and I'm sure you're going to see the exact same thing. It is the exact same thing. And he may be short again, Ryan. I think he is short again. Brings up a fourth. <clears throat> and now, are the Wildcats using a timeout? What are we? Yes, the Wildcats using a timeout. And if the scoreboard is correct, they would only have the one left. But, I mean, it doesn't matter. At this point, you gotta you got to use it. Fourth and goal from either the one or the two. And a play that we have really not seen be stopped at all this season has kind of been stopped two plays in a row now. Though I would think probably going to see them go back to it here on fourth and goal, yeah? I mean, your season's on the line. That is your play. Yeah, I, I, think, you certainly, I think you certainly run it again. Coach Faircloth is not happy about something. Gotcha. I don't know if the viewers back home can hear producer Corey, but just regular operating procedure out here. There know, it is. Just regular operating procedure. Fourth and goal from the one. Two twenty four left. Well, Tyler, this is uh this is the season. It is. Brady Bulls. And Ryan, 60% of the time, it works every time. Brady gets in. And you uh, at least are still in this one now. Just the 221 left. You know, you had talked about earlier having an onside kick. I mean, it's it's your onside kicking. Yeah. Right after this, there's no there's no question. Especially with, with one with one, just time the out, one time out left. You got yeah. an onside kick. Now I'm curious, even if you would have had all three, I, I feel like you probably still you're onside still kick. onside yeah. kick. Yeah. I think I think you certainly do. What's up? And it is good. Forty-one thirty-five. And you know, if you were able to get the onside kick, suddenly that that blocked PAT from earlier becomes the biggest thing on earth. But you are going to have to recover this onside kick. I'm curious, man. How 
How much time is spent throughout the course of the season practicing recovering an onside kick? Man, in college, we, we worked on it once a week. Uh, I mean, it was, you know, hands team is a, is a big deal. Uh, the, the kickoff, the onside kickoff team, because you just, you know, you don't use it. You use it one time a year. Uh, but you hope that we've worked on it uh, mm -hmm. because in, in the biggest moment of the season, that's what it's coming down to. Uh, and so, yes, you you got you to gotta at least walk through it. And yeah. so I would assume – you got guys like Skyler Lewis. I was about to say, I don't here. know how often, but you know, yeah, you got Skyler no. Lewis. It I looks see like Jackson Caden Hare. Mitchell is yeah. out there. Jackson Hare, Austin Cheney. Yeah, no, you you put you Cam put your Jefferson. athletic guys. You got a Laren Vaughn out there that's gonna he's gonna run down uh -huh. and, and take somebody out. That that's gonna be his sole role here. Uh, now Dallas Carter very much seems to be aware that that. Uh, I mean, if you see, they've got just the one man deep, and then everyone else is. Yeah, and Carter. They don't have as many people on the obvious kick side that that there normally is. Uh huh. But 2:21 left. Silver Springs gonna attempt the onside kick here. And Carter does recover at the 47 or the 48. And again, I don't remember two full timeouts being used. I just remember one, but the, the scoreboard is showing just one timeout remaining, so we have to assume that is the case. Starting to do math in your head over there. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how much we could possibly get the time. We could, we could get the ball with, with how much time there would be. One first down obviously does. I was going to say, the, yeah, yeah. It, it's completely irrelevant with one first down. Um but, yeah, we, we would get the ball back in this instance uh, if we're able to get three stops here. There wouldn't be a ton of time. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't, you know, obviously at this point you don't really care. You just let's get the ball back somehow. Yep. Uh, Carter here, obviously, they're, they're, they're not putting the ball in the air. It's going to be a run. And the Wildcats bring him down after a gain of about three or four on first down. And they don't so not going to call time. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, you you gotta you gotta call it. You gotta call it now. Gotta call it later. And yeah, so I you're was just gonna picking. ask. What, yeah. Do you have a preference on that? Uh, I don't. I don't. You know, a lot of people you, act like there's wait? a science to the two minute warning. Do I call it before? Do I call it after? I don't think that there is. I think it's it's a preference thing. Do you think in this situation you wait till it's going to be third down and you get to talk to your defense one last time? Hey, we got you know. I, don't I think know. that's a great idea. Yeah. Um, you know, if we're able to stop them. At the line of scrimmage here, then okay. Second and seven. He does a good job of staying in bounds, and he's still going. He ends up bringing that to what's going to be third and three, yeah, maybe. I, I think you do call a timeout and here. And they do use I, a timeout here with 131 left. I, I like your way of thinking, because now, well, and I don't know. I, I would, if if I'm Carter, season on the line. Let's say they get no yards here. Season mm -hmm. on the line. It's fourth I'm, and three. I would punt for sure. I'm punting as deep as I can. Yeah, I guess so. I can't give you I that just, good a field position. I know. I, think. I just. But I'm looking at a yard. I'm looking your, at yards per carry. How many times right. tonight have we seen third and ten, where it's the biggest moment of the game, and you give and, your and guys, Carter converts. You give your you guys know? the ultimate. I am letting y'all I, I mean, go the, win this. Thing. The the, yeah. can, the Cam Patterson QB keeper has been elite tonight. It, it has. Is, been. It, it gets it gets the Ryan Humphreys gold stamp of approval he's been incredible man four um, four rushing touchdowns tonight one of which was 69 yards a 25 yarder uh i don't know tyler i i'm i'm probably i'm probably putting the nail in the coffin uh okay. if, if if we get to that point and i hope we do obviously i mean i hope hope silver Springs gets to sure. stop here it's going to run down to just under a minute yeah it'd be about 50 uh, and then seconds. We'll, we'll see what carter decides 131 left a third and three from the 45 and hey Ryan, there is a flag. There is a flag, and that, that is almost certainly going to be on the offense, which would stop the clock. Yeah. This becomes a very big flag. It is holding. So it's going to be third and 13. Third and 13. It does stop the clock. It does stop the clock. So third and 13 with 127 left. All the way back at the 45. Now there is no there's no nail in the coffin here. You you, you get a stop, 
you're going to get the ball back. Yeah. Because uh, they, they'll punt from here, obviously. Now, you still don't pass, though. No, you still no, have to you run. Can't, you, you cannot pass here. If you pa if they throw and there's an incomplete pass, that would be a – Yes. Uh, just as far as a game management sense go, that would be a terrible, terrible mistake. You can't risk that. Cannot give Silver yeah, Springs a free timeout. Your half of your time. No, you, you yeah. can't. You can't give Silver Springs a free timeout. Third and thirteen, Patterson, coming back this just way. Just make the tackle. Yep. Okay. And it is finally blown dead. Fourth and about eleven ish. Fourth and so wow, I would my fault. I, I would nine. think I would think that Carter is probably just going to take the delay of game here. Yeah, take the delay of game and then punt. Yeah, I, I would think you're going to take yeah, the neither, delay of game neither here. Neither team has a timeout. Yeah. So that's going to give you about 30 seconds. Yeah, which is a lot less than I anticipated. It's actually more than I had anticipated, but of course there was the holding. So yeah, I in guess. my head there's only going to be 10 or 15. You're okay. looking at closer to 30-ish. Yeah, the play clock's at 6 now, 5. So Dallas Carter is going to take this, their delay. I'll say this. Uh, in this situation, 30 seconds – and they're they're in an obvious punt situation. I'm sending the house. Yeah. You 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 send eleven. You send ten guys. Um, they try to get the blocked punt. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You you absolutely go for the punt block. I guess the argument is you've got a Skylar Lewis who is a great punt I returner, agree. but I, but I would say uh, odds are. Nah, I, I don't know. If you block the punt, right. your odds of, of scoring <laughs> right. go up uh, sure. a lot more than if Skyler's able to get you know a 20, 25-yard return because that also takes off a considerable okay. amount of yeah, time. That, that's sure. a 15-second play. Half your time. Yeah, now you've so only got one offensive play, maybe two. You block two. the punt, maybe it takes 15 seconds, but you're, they, you're on the 30-yard line. They, they agree with you, Ryan. No, they're sending they, them. They definitely agree with they you. They are sending them. Fourth and 14, the punt. There's 32 seconds on the clock. And Skyler does return. And he's I do, I do like 20. that. He probably saved a couple seconds on that. Yeah, he probably did. So, Ryan, there's 22 seconds left, and you're taking over at the 21. Wildcats trail by six. They need a miracle to happen. Ryan, I got to say. A couple, couple of checklist things here. You can't take a sack. Mm -hmm. uh, you you got to get out of bounds. Mm -hmm. There There is no dilly-dallying. Don't fight for extra yards. Can't do it. Uh, you're actually better off just falling. Just fall down, get the ball to the official, spot it, spike it, whatever it is. Um, but, yeah, I think you're going you're, you're gonna to see a lot of – you're going to see a lot of throws to the boundary here because it's, it's closer proximity to the sidelines. Drop it back. He's rolling out. He's running. Just get out of bounds. And he gets out of bounds at the 23. And the problem with 23 seconds, Tyler, is just, you oh, know. the 28, rather. That, Sorry. That's, a, that's an awesome nine-yard gain, but, but it, almost used it was half eight your seconds. Yeah. Um, eight-yard gain. Whew. It's going to take a miracle. <laughs> Second and three from the 28. Clock down to 15 seconds left. Wildcats have 72 yards to go. If they want to advance to the area around to face Stevenville. Lend it fly deep towards Skylar Lewis. Incomplete. Just nine seconds on the clock now. You know, if this was the NFL, I love that call. Uh -huh. uh, because you get a you get a pass interference, it's a spot foul. Uh, but with nine seconds, if I'm Dallas Carter. I'm tackling Skyler Lewis. Yeah. You only get 15 yards. They don't put time back on the clock. Uh, so you do that once or twice, and, and this one's over. Yeah, worst case scenario, I give you an untimed down at, what, the 40? You know? Yeah, I agree. I'm not a uh... – and we actually have a player down for Dallas Carter. Ryan, this – we said it was going to come down to the final play, final drive, and I mean it very much – Oh, yeah, we nailed it. I we mean, did not. It's get, a six point. It's a one possession game. We nailed that. We didn't get our eighty points though. Did not we're get at 80. seventy six. Well, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Suffer Springs were to win, it would come down to eighty. Ryan, no matter what happens at the final nine seconds of this game, it's been an incredible season. I've had a ton of fun spending my Friday nights with you, man. Hopefully, I get to spend at least one more with you. But yep. Either way, it's been an incredible time. We appreciate every single one of our advertisers for allowing this season to happen. We appreciate every single one of our viewers for tuning in with us every week.
So we're almost ready to resume action. And, I mean, that, that gives Coach Faircloth one final moment to get to talk to his guys and figure out what we're going to do here. I think you probably, assuming that Carter is backed up here, they actually put in <laughs> – they actually put in Cam Patterson on defense, uh, which I don't hate. Obviously yeah. the most athletic player on the field. I think you probably try to get oh, good something quick, get as many as you can, and you got one more play. Mm -hmm. I think you're max two plays here. Carter bringing the house, throwing it quickly to Schuyler. Schuyler flips get to out, Jackson out, Get out, Hare. get out. Jackson Hare okay. does get out of bounds okay. with two seconds on the clock. Up to the 40. I, I will say you getting across the 50 with Brady Driver's arm strength. You've now you've now reached territory where he can throw it to the end zone. Mm -hmm. I think. Uh, you, you, I mean that, or you can see something just like that. Yeah. Um, it's at the 49. One final play, Ryan. So you, you the put crowd Grayson. Is on their feet. You put Grayson Reams in there. You got three receivers to the right. I, I could see some sort of hook and ladder. I could see where we're chunking it up. Brady lets it fly for Chris Adams. And that one is picked off. Dallas Carter just going to go down. And by a final score of 41 to 35, there's no flags. That's going to do it for this one. For the second year in a row, the Dallas Carter Cowboys advance to the area round where they will face Stephenville. Ryan, a, a great game from both teams here tonight. We knew that it would be, and they did not disappoint. There is a flag on the play. It, yeah. Okay, it is at the 50. No, oh, just after the play. All yeah. right. Well, that that does do it then by a final score of 41-35. to 35. Ryan, real quick before we get out of here, any final thoughts on this season, man? Great season. Um, you know, that's tough. I I, I know the feeling. I, I, I hate that I'm having this same, you know, I said this last year, lost to Dallas Carter. It sucks, and it's going to suck for a while for the seniors. This is a lot of these guys' last football game they'll ever play. Uh, that's, a, that's a hard pill to swallow. Uh, and I feel for those guys because I, I still think about my last game often. Uh, Sulphur Springs, fantastic, fantastic year. Eight and three finish, made it to the playoffs, second in district. Uh, you know, hug, hug a Wildcat tonight, hug a senior. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, that's a tough loss. C Dallas Carter, great team. Yeah. Uh, congratulations on advancing to the second round. And uh, I, I enjoyed it, Tyler. It's been fun, man. Yeah, it really has. Again, like you're saying, congratulations to Dallas Carter for, again, advancing to the area around. We want to thank every single one of you all for, for hanging out with us tonight and for everyone that hung out with us this entire season. Again, thank you to every single one of our advertisers as well. On behalf of the entire team here at Chad's Media, cameraman uh, Chloe Copel, we got Caitlin Hankins, Abby Tiffs, the producer man Corey Hankins, my partner Ryan Humphreys. I'm Tyler Lennon. We'll see you all next time.